Let your experience begin right now. From high atop the mountains of British Columbia to you listening around the world, this is Spaced Out Radio. You can follow us on our website, spacedoutradio.com, on Twitter, at Spaced Out Radio. Give our Facebook page a like, Spaced Out Radio Show. You can follow us on Instagram, Dave Scott, S-O-R, or on our YouTube channel, Spaced Out Radio Show. Buckle up, space travelers. It's time to go for a ride as we are live on Spaced Out Radio. Good evening and welcome to Space Out Radio tonight. I am your host, Dave Scott. Sorry about the technical snafu. A little bit of an internet and Skype connection problem. We've got it solved, so now we can go live at spacedoutradio.com on Spreaker and on Revolution Radio. We welcome you to tonight's show as we broadcast out of Uncle Jimbo's cabin in the Great White North, live on this Friday night, early Saturday morning, if you're on the East Coast. Here at Spaced Out Radio, we are broadcasting three hours a night, seven days a week, because we want to be your official one-stop shop when it comes to the supernatural, paranormal, conspiratorial, and so much more. If you're on the Spaced Out Radio side, I hope you like our music. It's a good one. Former Guns N' Roses lead guitarist Ron Bumblefoot Thal is the official guitar god of SOR. Check out a couple of his music videos by clicking on the Bumblefoot banner on our website. You can follow us at Twitter, at Spaced Out Radio. Give our Facebook page a like, Spaced Out Radio Show. On Instagram, I can be followed at Dave Scott, SOR. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, Spaced Out Radio Show. And our website is spacedoutradio.com. At this time, we say, hi, how are you? Sorry about the snafu with the technical difficulties there. If you're listening in on Revolution Radio's chat room on the High Plains Talk Radio Network, in the Spaced Out Radio chat room on Spreaker like Dominique and AK Cog, and on Facebook at Euphoria Chronicles, Chronicles of the Unknown, Forest Moon Paranormal, and our flagship chat room, the SOR Space Travelers. If you haven't joined the SOR Space Travelers Club yet, it's time. Tonight we will be making our second monthly draw for a prize for one of our space travelers. Hey, it only costs 5 bucks a month, and with that you get your name entered in monthly prize draws, access to private group interviews, access to a special section on our website, and so much more. On our website as well, you can read the latest blogs like Mine on the Paranormal, and you can read Eric Markham's SOR Spacewire for your latest in the weird news. Tonight's show is brought to you by PurplePlates.com, helping heal your body, mind, and soul. Rivulet Reiki and Readings, providing healings in person or to distance. The New Agora newspaper is the official paper of this show, and the iTunes app Spirit Story Box is the official ghost hunting app of the mighty S-O-R. Remember, if you are a listener of Spaced Out Radio and a listener of Revolution Radio, do us a favor. Take the time to donate to Revolution Radio today. It is a donation station funded only by you, the valued listener, so take the time to help out today. Tonight on Spaced Out Radio, it's the last Friday of the month, which means we blow the gathering whistle and gather a few friends for some hot topic discussions on the month that was. We work pretty hard and serious around these parts, night after night, so this is my night to kind of kick it back, relax, take a deep breath, maybe crack a beverage or two, take our shoes off, 
and just chill out and chat all topics in the paranormal sphere. And because it's the last Friday of the month, once again, we will be making our SOR Space Travelers draw for our monthly prize. It is another great book that will happen near the end of the show so you have to stick around if you're a space traveler your participation in this show is also needed ask away your questions if you want me and the panel to give you some answers here's the panel tonight we got from force moon paranormal and s4 with e squared we have eric cooper eric markham from the sor space wire purpleplates.com lady kareen de winter from spaced out weekend What's your name again, Elizabeth? Elizabeth Anglin and Robert Rose. Robert Big Man Rose making his appearance here on Spaced Out Radio's SOR Roundtable for the first time. He is one of our premier bloggers on spacedoutradio.com, and he also runs a show called The Quickening. Welcome for your first time. Good to take your virginity, Robert. (laughs) Oh, baby. That's fine. Excellent. <laughs> Excellent. So, so let's kick this thing off here. Here we go. Topic number one for all of you, my studious panel. Last night we had Bill Hauser on the show doing Ghost Box Sessions. I thought it was very cool because we were getting some serious, serious information for people who wanted to hear from their loved ones. Elizabeth, I'll start with you. Do you believe... This is where Elizabeth is supposed to talk. Can everybody hear me? Oh, I can. Yeah, I got you. Yeah, it's a little. I can out. Yeah, Sorry. cutting in now. Okay. I don't know if you. I don't know if you're broadcasting now because I actually said I was playing with Bumblefoot. Well, everybody. <laughs> sh- I just had an electrical flash here, so I mean, it's brand new, so. Okay, let's get this thing fired up. Are you a fan of the ghost box, Elizabeth? I don't know. I don't have I don't have an Apple iPhone, so I don't have a ghost box. And I'm a medium, so when ghosts are around, if they want to talk to me or I notice them, then I just talk to them. So I think that it's kind of cool. Um, I don't think that people are learning how to use their, and I'm going to call it God-given abilities to do positive evidential mediumship if you're relying on a technology. It's kind of the tool thing. Um, You know, we have this in intuitive readings. You can start out or you can stay with tools like tarot cards or I Ching coins or runes or angel cards or what have you. But after a while, you you maybe want to progress to more direct and more specific um, methods and research. And, you know, that sounds a little snobby, but it's kind of the way I feel like it's part of the progression. And and for what it is, I think it's kind of cool. That's my opinion. Corrine, how about you? Um, I love... um I love that ghost boxes exist and they've existed for quite some time now because <clears throat> even if you are a good medium or you you have access to a good medium, w- you're still not going to hear that voice that you want to hear. Um, so uh, I love the ghost box for that. I think Bill is incredible the way he conducts his sessions. Um, and like last night, you guys, I don't know if you guys were all here, but, I asked for Constantine Rodova, who is the father of EVPs, basically. And um, I heard his German accent, you know, and, and I know he can come through. So I love ghost boxes. I think they're very cool, except they can be a little dangerous, too. Well, I think it's, it was pretty interesting because when you said that you heard an accent, I had mentioned almost at the exact same time that I was hearing what I thought was a British accent, and you confirmed it for me, Corrine, that it was a German accent. So the more I listened in, the more I was hearing it. And Corrine is calling in once again. I guess your phone line dropped, Corrine, so we got you back now. 
that. Oh, that's all right. That's all right. Why? It's I guess the night. I, I'm assuming okay. it's the night tonight. Robert Rose from the Quickening. Do you believe that the ghost box is a valuable tool to communicate with the dead? I believe that it's a valuable tool. Uh, there's a few improvements and tweaks that I've made along the way. And it's not to say because of, uh, you know, skeptics saying, well, you could be hearing the ball game or you could be hearing the weather report. Uh, but you can't discount the evidence that's out there. You can't go and say because you disagree with something uh, that necessarily means it's wrong. There's people who have evidence and you can't discredit that. So, yes, it is a valuable tool, but I have improvements upon that that I have made here at home. So you're trying to build your own is what you're saying? I have built it. Okay. And what kind of results are you getting? Lots of different results. Uh, I've taken it out with me wherever I go. And I haven't published the recordings and things like that, but uh, testing it and stuff like that. What I do is I've had my ham radio license now for about 10 years, and I have a theory um, if you guys are interested in hearing about it. I was just asking, Rob, I was just asking about the ham radio and why can't we use a ham radio as an EVP uh, box? Right. Yeah, you were asking that last night. Yeah, yeah, AM is actually part of the shortwave band anyway. And I think what I've seen is those boxes scan through the AM signature. So it's just the lower end of the shortwave anyway. Uh, well, yes and no. Um, not to shoot off topic, but with a software-defined radio, you can scan through any uh, part of the radio spectrum. And my theory beyond, besides that is that a stronger being would not need as much airwaves to, uh, to make their presence known. Like when you're in the car and you have 107.9 on and then you turn it to 93.5, it actually takes less energy to put out the 93.5. Uh, so when you go further down the spectrum, my idea is that my theory is that these beings that are stronger could be heard further down the spectrum. And not only that, but if you adjust your squelch on that and you get rid of the regular broadcast, what you're doing is you are creating a white noise canvas for these beings to clearly come in on. Right, right. I have a, I have a stupid question. Can I ask my dumb question, please? Anybody? <laughs> Go right ahead. Has anybody tried EVPs on Bigfoot telepathic communications? Uh, no, <laughs> not here. <laughs> Never thought of All it. All right then. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm just curious because you know, uh, you know, if if they're putting out telepathic communications or doing something and they, they want to be heard, I don't know what the difference would be. I mean so I don't know. It's just just curious. Just wondering. Eric Cooper okay. from Forest Moon, your opinion on the ghost box. Good, bad, indifferent. I thought it was cool. Uh, last night was actually the first time I've heard one in use. Because um, like I said last night, uh, yeah, I actually thought it was that, that machine that gives you random words and, you know, not like EV, not like a white noise thing. So I was impressed. Um uh, when I asked my question about my grandmother, for example, uh, there were two different confirmations that heard I am fine, Eric. And that was one from my mate and someone else in the chat room. So, yeah, you, you can't just, for them to, for it to go through random radio or, you know, random frequencies like it does, uh, that wouldn't be a coincidence. So I think it's a good tool. Would I run out and spend 250 bucks to get one? I don't got that kind of money, so probably not. I've got mediums I can use. But for anyone that could afford one, by all means, I think it's a good tool. I'm still convinced that they do work. I'm not sure how well. I think that there is something to it. I think behind the noise that there could be. But, you know, the skeptic in me, and believe it or not, there is a tad of that, still questions whether or not some of those 
dials because it's spinning on radio frequency dials, okay, and it's mm-hmm. scanning other radio stations. So the skeptic in me is still wondering, is my ear picking up what I believe is the spirit on the other side, or is it hearing radio and knowing how radio works, maybe picking up radio words that just happen to be coinciding with uh, what the topic du jour is during that ghost here, box session. Here, here's the skeptic in me, Dave. One, I, I'm still a firm believer in my good old-fashioned digital recorder EVP session. That's just me. Um, the skeptic in me says, I could see a lot of psychosomatic possibility with people wanting to hear what they're going to hear. And like you said, the random words coming through, they're going to hear what they want to hear. That's the downfall I see as far as the skeptic, the skeptical side of me comes through. Are any of you else skeptic like I am on that ghost box? I want to believe it's true. And I think Bill is a very trustworthy gentleman who isn't going to bring a bunch of BS onto this show. If he believes in it, he's been doing this for about six, seven years on the ghost box, been investigating the paranormal for the last 20 plus years. I believe him because he's a good, honest guy. But there is that question whether or not there is any accuracy to a bunch of radio signals being intertwined together. Well, let, let me add one more thing, too. I think part of it is the tool. The other, I think 20% of it's a tool. 70, 80% of it would be the, the operator. And in Bill's yeah. case last night, Bill's been doing that for a long time. Bill's in tune with his equipment, and he's going to produce a better response than, say, some random person that jumped out, went to eBay, picked one up, and went out to try it for the first time. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I, I I think Bill is outstanding with how he uses it. He knows how to a- a- ask the right questions. He knows how he knows how to use his equipment, and so he gets a good response, right. uh, a good valid response. So that's where I stand with that one. I, I think a lot of it's uh, the user. Kareen, you're a firm believer. You've had Bill on your show as well. Do you agree with what Eric says that it's the user and there's some sort of you know, mental trust in the spirits using that box to communicate? Yeah, I definitely believe that. But, you know, you you saying, like, that you're a little bit skeptical of what is coming through because it seems so, it's so random with all the noise, right? With all mm-hmm. the freaking different stations going, running through. and But, I mean, it's almost the same thing as when someone sees a butterfly and they think it's their grandmother. Like, I have a problem with that. I'm very skeptical about a lot of stuff. And I just, I don't, I don't agree with that. Oh, the butterfly. Oh, it's my, my grandmother. And oh, the dragonfly. That's my, my uh, uncle. And, you know, I mean, I just think that stuff is BS. <laughs> no, hold so. it back. Tell us what you really feel. <laughs> so, I mean, it's, you know, but when I heard... Constantine wrote of a, say his name when I had um, when I was on another show doing EPs. When I heard him say his name in his accent, I was like, "Oh God, that's it, man!" I, that was totally believable. Just like Eric, you know, having the communication that he had last night. You kind of, I think, you instinctively know if something's BS or not. Well, at least I hope so. This is. T- can I break in here and interject something? Because in, in mediumship circles, especially in physical uh. mediumship circles, it does matter who's running the equipment. I mean, th- there are mediums that will just get regular recordings of spirits talking. And, and they're doing their kind of EVP sessions. But the fact that these mediums are very skilled and they have a lot of physical energy, they can somehow support this you know they can support the equipment and so it sounds to me like bill is supporting his equipment energetically and and that takes another level of of development in in mediumistic terms if you're going to parallel the two so i'd say yeah i mean it's 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 one technique but there are all sorts of physical mediumship techniques to find you know, spirits talking, and I've got tapes of spirits talking in full, complete paragraphs, 
from that have come out of you know physical mediumship sessions with very good physical mediums. So, but they know how to support that. Let's move on right. to a sec- or let's move on to the second topic because I don't want to spend. We've spent twenty minutes on this one, and we all got a bunch. And God, I don't want to call overtime half an hour into the show. <laughs> you know, <clears throat> a couple nights ago, I had Victor Vigiani on. He is one of Canada's premier UFO investigators, especially when it comes to disclosure. And in the second hour of the program, when he was on, we started getting into chatting about what the Vatican may know about UFOs. Eric Markham, I'm going to start with you from the SOR Space Wire on this one. Do you think the Vatican knows ET is here or that we have made contact? And why do you think they're hiding it then? Well, I've always thought that if you expand the universe past our, you know, solar system, the church is not going to be as powerful, is that the word, or as relevant? And I think it's within their interest to keep it, you know, keep it hidden. I don't, I do believe that they know. I think they've known for quite some time. But, uh, so much of you face it, it's only been the last two hundred years that we even thought that there might be life somewhere else that it could have it just uh, it I don't think the mindset the way i'm trying i guess what I'm trying to say is the mindset of the people is such that as long as it's just us and the rest is wasted space. We're going to turn to the church as soon as the you know it's the cat's out of the bag that there's billions of civilizations out there. How you know how relevant is the church and the you know terra centric view that they've been you know espousing for two thousand years? Kind of like follow the money. Yes, Robert Rose from the Quickening. What do you think on the topic? Do you think the Vatican's holding out on us? Uh, yeah, I do. I mean, there's little subtle hints. I mean, even in Scripture, when Jesus says, "I have sheep you know not of," uh, but I think that the biggest thing is, is like, we don't want to have to be made to feel small with all our advancements and everything going on. Uh, it's, you know, I agree with Eric wholeheartedly, but I just have to add, I think that the church needs us to look up to them just as much as they look up to, uh, the Lord or any other religion. And I think it would be a huge culture shock, uh, for this disclosure to happen. So yeah, I believe they are holding out. Corrine DeWinter from purpleplates.com, Supernatural Radio, your thoughts. Um, I agree um, that they probably do know a lot more than they're ever going to let on that they know, but it would be kind of funky if they finally came out and told us all about aliens. And, you know, I mean, let's face it, the Catholic Church has really um, hidden a lot of things for what they consider our best interest. So, well, and, and that brings yeah. up a good point, Corrine, and I, I apologize for cutting you off, but you look at the Shroud of Turin. That is owned by the papacy. Okay, even though it's in Turin, Italy, only comes out once every few years. It's believed to be the, the Shroud that Christ went into the resurrection with, or his body at least. Okay, but yet, they have yet to confirm or deny that... The Shroud of Turin is that of Jesus Christ. And if they're willing to hold something back like that, of course they're going to hold back something like aliens. Yet, for for some unknown reason, they feel they have to play this game with humanity. And I don't know who has the beeping going on in the background, but if you have a watch or something, remember the old... Pikachu watch or Pokemon watch or whatever that was. That's what it sounds like. It's time time to feed your watch. Anyhow, anyhow, um, 
I, 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 I truly believe that the Catholic Church likes playing this game with its followers and the people around the world, almost giving just little snippets of cheese, like to to the to the mice, saying, you know, we <laughs> we have all we have this food, but it's only so much food. Do you, uh-huh. do, you do you know what I'm saying, Eric Cooper? Yeah, I do. <laughs> This is where you. This is where you respond. Okay, <laughs> I'm just sitting here laughing because, uh, yeah, you know, the Vatican has had the Hubble telescope for years, and then they came up with Lucifer, which I thought that was an awesome question uh, the other night. Yeah, Lucifer being the light bearer would be a perfect uh, name for their little telescope. But I think. If anyone, like well, like we've said before, if anyone, if anyone was to come out and, and disclose, I think Pope Francis would be the one to do it. Um, I think Pope Francis knows what's going on. If he doesn't, his Vatican does. And again, like everyone else has already said, um, it's all about power, power and control. And, and keeping it from humanity is what they do. Because if they released it, they release a lot of control. Then you've got other religions. There's a lot. Of, we we discussed this in S four actually uh, last last time we had a show <laughs> about um, you know let's let's discuss religion for a second. The the Muslims fully acknowledge and and admit there's ETs and UFOs. Scientology does as well, if you want to call it a religion, but. Then you have uh, some of the other ones, and everything else is a demon, and aliens are demons. And I bring that up because that just came up in discussion like yesterday or the day before on Paul Lyde's news feed, that all these people disappearing in the national forests, it's not aliens, it's demons taking them. Oh, God. Now, if they're thinking that, if they think that, do you really think humanity is ready for disclosure? I have to look at it and go, oh, my God, no. Um, they, they aren't ready. They're going to point their finger at everything else besides E.T. and Bigfoot. And I had to address it because I said, look, if you really think Bigfoot is stealing 3,000 people a year, nation, not even nationwide, globally, then how come we're not seeing more Bigfoot sightings? And, of course, they have their argument with that. But then the, the, you, have, the, you have two or three random people that are jumping up saying, well, I don't, so I don't see how you can't say it's not demons because it, it couldn't be extraterrestrials. It's got to be demonic. No, it's not. Um, but, okay, Vatican knows what's going on. And, yeah, I, I think the Vatican knows, um, as far as relinquishing control, I, I think they know that, Humanity is not ready to, to hear that there's aliens here. Elizabeth Anglin, you get a final word on this. Um, back in 1996, I met the Italian stigmata Giorgio I think, Bongiorno or Bongiovanni at uh, the Star Knowledge Conference, and he was actually a, a student of a, of a padre. I want to say Padre Pio, but I know that's coming from a Thornton Wilder book. But he, the Padre was a stigmata. <clears throat> Both of them had alien experiences, George, and they were documented and sent to the Vatican. And Giorgio had alien experiences and went on a ship and saw Christ on a ship. And I believe him. I spent several days with him. I saw his stigmata. I felt the energy change of his stigmata. The, you know, he was in. He was in the Catholic Church. He was a big part of the Catholic Church, and they documented everything and sent it in. So the fact that they're, you know, if they're saying that there isn't, they have their own people who have had experiences, who have documented it and and sent it into the Vatican, and, you know, they're just not sharing. They're not going to let us know that. So here we are. Moving on to the next topic as we start to speed things up here. Last week, I had Ian Punnett, former Coast to Coast AM weekend host on the show. We got into it big time about journalism and the way the media is working this day, whether or not there's too many podcasts. We've already covered that numerous times on the roundtable. Whether or not there is oversaturation, whether or not 
the media is being infiltrated by numerous corporations and government officials. And the one thing him and I did agree on was, in my experience in a newsroom and people that I know and people whom he has met who works in a newsroom, never once have we ever encountered a government official to come in and say, um, yeah, you can't run that story. That's just way too way too close for comfort here. That's not allowed. It's never happened. And I will go on record with that. I will. I believe Ian, when he says that, that, you know, it's identical to what I believe. Eric Markham, let's start with you on this one. Do you think that the medium of radio, television, news, print, and now internet is infiltrated by government agencies? I think not so much. I don't think they can get a handle on the internet, but I think as far as specific bias in the broadcast, depending on what, you know, you, you'll get a completely different story about the same thing if you listen to BBC News or you hear MSNBC, CNN, Fox. I don't... I think there's definitely a bias, and I think to an extent the media is being controlled. I don't know if it's being controlled by the advertisers, through the advertisers, or some kind of, uh, I don't know. I think the short answer is I think there is some kind of subtle control in the background. Yes, I do. Okay, but you mentioned the the media news, and one thing that we touched on with Ian Punnett last week on the show was that the one thing the United States does not have, like other Western countries, is a national broadcaster that is, you know, publicly funded. You have PBS, but that's not really what we're talking about. We're talking a publicly funded broadcaster like the CBC here in Canada. Everyone has heard about the BBC in England and Great Britain. And what happens is people like Fox News or CNN or ABC News or NBC, whoever it is, they've decided to swing their side with whatever political side that they are on. So they've chosen sides. That doesn't mean that they are infiltrated. Corrine, do you agree with me or disagree with me? Uh, I, sorry, I was actually just trying to catch a mouse in my house. <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> is, it, is, it, is, is it Republican, Democratic, or Libertarian, or Green? <laughs> well, it's not Green anymore. Um, <laughs> anyways, um, I'm... I'm sorry, could you go on to the next person? I'm sorry. Okay. Uh, All right, Robert Rose, we'll go with you on this one, if you don't mind. Do you think the the media is infiltrated, or do you think that the political siding of stations is what leads people to believe that it is being controlled? Well, I can't say is they're infiltrated by a government agent who comes on and says, I'm sorry, Dave, you can't say that. Uh, But Ted DiBiase said it best, everybody has a price. I don't think the government needs to interject because we are so full of all these lobbyists uh, and the influence of money and the Rockefellers and the Rothschilds. And I could go on and on and on. The government doesn't have to step in because it's the money, the money that talks and tells these networks what they should say and what they shouldn't say. And it's what fuels them. And, uh, you know, I got to add right now, we are on the horizon of a new phenomenon uh terrestrial tv is dead i think and it's people like you out there i gotta say you are keeping the information alive you're keeping it real uh so i think it's a matter of money i don't think an abc organization has to step in the money's you know everybody's money's green and it just depends on how much of it's coming your way elizabeth anglin infiltrated or just taking political sides Well, it's different than it used to be. Um, It used to be very infiltrated back in the Cold War and even coming out of the Cold War. And I have done a lot of research on, you know, what happened with John Mack and the inquiry at Harvard. 
what happened, it, it's interesting, the first year that he came out and did media, nobody knew what side to take, so nobody took any sides. And then there was this defining Wall Street Journal article where the journalist basically asked, what would you have to do to, to make Dr. Mack stop doing his research into alien abduction? And he went to the head of Harvard and, and said, how come you aren't censoring him? And he said, well, because nobody has complained and everyone seems quite happy with the work that he's doing. And he said, I suppose if someone complained, then we'd have to form a committee of inquiry and look into it. Well, that's exactly what happened <laughs> Two years later, after his book was published, is is that they you could see them them utilizing, uh, you know, somebody making it into a controversy. When before that, everybody was like, "Oh, that's cool! What a cool guy! What a nice psychiatrist!" And then you started seeing the sides after the Wall Street Journal article, and it was almost like marching papers. That's 1992. Now I tend to agree with Robert Rose, which is everybody's money is green. <laughs> you know, it's not just a CIA, DIA. You've got a plant in there somewhere giving marching orders like in Noam Chomsky's manufactured consent. It's whatever corporation can pay you the most to be that person on the inside to write the thing that goes in, that swings in their favor. That's Coop. just what... Okay, Coop, you I've got final chart. Say. Yeah, I've got a chart right in front of me that breaks down the six companies that run everything in the media. You've got GE that runs Comcast, NBC, Universal, News Corps, which runs Fox, Wall Street Journal, and New York Post, Disney, which we all know there's conspiracy theories within Disney alone, runs oh. ABC, e ESPN, uh, you got Viacom that runs MTV, which is turning political. And uh, Bet, you got Time Warner that runs CNN, HBO, Time. And CBS is its very own company, which runs Showtime and Smithsonian National, uh, all those. So if you take those six companies and look at the green that's coming into them, which is, uh, I believe, coming from some of that government subsidiary, um, yeah, they can manipulate and control everything that you're being told. That's it in a nutshell. Now, you, when you say, I'll disagree with you on that, because when you say that the six companies own all the media, okay, mm -hmm. you're forgetting there is a lot of independent stations out there across America. There is a and lot. They may own the big, pseudo-big name ones that are on cable television, okay, right. or the premier radio networks, which has a lot of different types of shows. But there's still a, more independent radio stations than what those six people own in the United States. Okay. Well, let me let me clarify then. Those are the mainstream media that are being manipulated. Your independent uh, companies, you won't see being manipulated so much, and they will bring out the news. I still have a tough time with that one. Anyways, moving on. <laughs> Moving on, because we got a ton of topics to hit on the SOR Roundtable. We do it the final Friday of every month here on Spaced Out Radio. Superstitions. I am curious to know if each and every one of you have a superstition. Not two or three, one superstition. Corrine, are you are you uh, done mouse trapping? Yeah, no, listen, right? So I chased, I got the mouse outside, and the thing came back. <laughs> and he's back in my kitchen. And he was like, is it your grandmother? Yeah. Is it you your grandmother, Corrine? <laughs> <laughs> You no, gotta go. You gotta go. All, you gotta go all iron chic on him, and you gotta break its back and make it humble. Throw it in a camel clutch. That's what I suggest you do. Get get on the no, ground. No, it's Uncle Ralph. It's Uncle Ralph. <laughs> Throw it on the ground. <laughs> Throw it on the ground, wrap its, wrap its little forearms around your knees, pull back on the chin. That's a good, solid camel clutch right there. It'll be humble. <laughs> It'll tap out, and you win. Kick it outside. It's a winner yep. right there. That's all you need to do. That's all <laughs> you okay. need to do. Corrine, do you have a superstition that you follow? Oh, Lord, yes. Well, I don't know if this is just an Italian thing. But when um, when I was uh, younger, my mother, every time she saw a hearse, um, uh, she would spit. So every time I see a hearse now, I spit, even if it's just on TV. Um, really? What other? Oh, and also when a bird crashes into a window, it means that someone's going to die 
who you know. Mm -hmm. And um, what else? Oh, God, there's a, there's a bunch of them, man. Knock on wood, I do that when there's wood available. I guess I do. I, I am a slave to superstition, you know? He, he wants one, just one. Yes, just one, Kareem. <laughs> just one. Co <laughs> Coop, since you cut in, you're up next. What's your superstition? Okay. How many times I do you have to pull wood. on your beard a night? I knock on, I know, I don't pull on the beard. I walk on, I, I knock on wood. I do that. It wakes up the wood spirits. So yeah, they can correct anything that, uh, yeah, that you might have said. That's my one. Robert Rose from The Quickening, you tell me, what is your superstition? Honestly, Dave, I don't have any, and that's... Oh, come on! Thing. Don't be so boring! <laughs> You're the new oh, guy here! you got to impress. At least make something up. <laughs> uh, well, I'll tell you what. Uh, where I work, and I can't mention the name of the place, but when people do pass away, uh, everybody at least makes sure to open the window so that their spirit can get out. I've done it, but I don't know if there's necessarily any truth behind it. So, hmm. Eric Markham from the SOR Space Wire, your superstition. Okay, I've got one very specific one. I do not own a suit because I'm afraid as soon as I buy one, somebody in the immediate family is going to die and I'm going to have to wear it to their funeral. I will not oh, buy a, a suit one. until I have to. Well, you don't have your, you don't have your dress blues? No. Oh, I wouldn't have been able to fit in. I wouldn't have been able to fit into that by now anyway. I probably could get one of my legs into the old legs of my dress blues. I've, I've still got my class A's, but like you, I doubt I'd fit in them. All right, Kareen, we've got yours. Robert, we got yours. Cooper, we got yours. Markham, we got yours. Elizabeth Anglin, what is your superstition? It's actually a learned behavior. When I got my big X race horse, 17 hands tall, very hard to control, had a mind of his own, I kept saying, you know what? I'm going to break my back off this horse. I'm going to break my back off this horse. <laughs> and then I broke my back off the horse. I fell off the horse and they got thrown and broke my back. And everybody who had heard me say it said, you know, you said that was going to happen. So after they told me that I had predicted or ha I had kind of cursed myself with breaking my back off my horse, whenever I say something bad, I now say, cancel, cancel, cancel. And it's I'm really <laughs> serious about it. Like, cancel, cancel, cancel. No, I don't mean that. That's not happening. Jeez. So that's my superstition. Well... I have a, a number, and because I have control, I can do more than one. <laughs> uh, I hate the number 13. I really do. Anything to do with the number 13, I can't stand it. Just keep it away from me. And being a, uh, you know, a former athlete, not anything near the pro level, but just the superstition of doing everything the same. You know, a lot of people will call it routine, but if I'll tell you, there's something true. I remember one hockey game that I played. I had, um, I put my gear on the opposite way. Normally, I start with my right side, but this game I put it on. I started with my left side. Don't know why. My legs felt like they were a hundred pound bricks each. And I finally, the God's honest truth. I finally said, I've, I can't play tonight. And I was trying to impress a girl in the in the in the stands that I had brought to the game too. And I figured, you know what, I can't I can't do this. This I, I'm absolutely playing like crap here. And so I picked on their tough guy, and I fought their tough guy so I'd get a game ejection, so I didn't have to play anymore. And, <laughs> And my 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 karma for that, you my, win. <laughs> no, no, he yeah, won. He, he won. He won. My karma for that was he was the he was my last hockey fight, and he was the only guy I ever fought. No word of a lie. That every time he hit me, I actually saw stars. And after I, so usually in hockey, you take the first one, you do the blackout thing, and then you know it feels pretty good. 
You know, you just run with it. But every time he hit me, I saw stars. And after I took about the third one, I kind of went, uh-oh, this ain't good. He, he ended up breaking my nose, and I went down. He came down on top of me, got voted best fight of the year. But either way, either way, I will. I never have since then put my hockey gear on the wrong way because mm-hmm. it just didn't feel right and I didn't want another broken nose and that was the only fight I lost in that league it was terrible I'm still like 22 years later or 20 years later I'm still crying and fretting over it that's how pissed off I was (laughs) you know funny story my first ever hockey fight that I had a big sports talk here I'm only wasting time because we're close to a commercial Mm. my first hockey fight I ever had I didn't know the guy. His name was Jerome Jerome Gray. And he sucker punched me and I kinda he was only like five foot six, five five, five six, not a tall guy, but he was like real stocky dude, right? And so this is my like my fifth or sixth game in the in this league. Nobody really knows who I am. And I tell him to F off, you little troll. Go back under your bridge, right? You know. <laughs> you know. Whoa. So so he sucker punches me, gets the penalty, and we're skating down the ice, and we get to center ice, and uh, and he goes, come on, let's go. I said, okay, let's do this. Uh, anyways, I four-punched him, literally. He didn't touch me, I four-punched him. About two years ago, Jerome and I became friends shortly after that, and about two years ago, Jerome comes up to me, and he goes, Davey, I got to ask you something. He, I said, what? He goes, are you, when are you going to come play hockey again? And I'm like, oh, dude, I'm, I'm way too fat and ugly now to play. And, you know, I, I don't think I could. My knees are bad now. He goes, no, you got to come out. you got to come out. I'm like, why? He goes, because you caught me at the end of a shift. And I was tired and I shouldn't have fought you. I want my rematch. <laughs> and I'm, like, I'm like, dude, you're like in like ju- jujitsu and stuff now. I gained weight and got ugly. You know, there's no way I could, no way. And he's like, no, Cherney, you got to come up, and you have to absolutely come play because we got to go again. You owe me that. I'm like, yeah. I said, you're a one and done, Jerome. I got you the first time. <laughs> you know. So that's my my biggest thrill in hockey, right there. Hmm. You know. Hey, I know we're almost at a break here, but Bill Cardwell from the SOR Space Travelers Club on Facebook has set the password for tonight. It is confabulation. Confabulation is the password. We're going to go to a break here. More SOR Roundtable right after this on Spaced Out Radio. Looking for news beyond the mainstream news? Head to spacedoutradio.com and check out the SOR Spacewire. This is Spaced Out Radio's Eric Markham, News Director for the SOR Spacewire. Daily, I will bring you intriguing stories and outlandish reports from what's going on around the world. UFO sightings, paranormal activity, conspiracies, alternative health, and so much more. And if you have news, email me at news at spacedoutradio.com. Hi there. I'm Butch Wachowski, lead investigator with U4COP. On the final Monday of every month, you can listen to me and host Dave Scott on Spaced Out Radio's Strange Days. We're going to get to the heart of the matter when it comes to what's happening out there. People are seeing and experiencing things from ET contact to Bigfoot, and I want to hear about it. Your experiences are what we investigators need to help solve these unknown mysteries. So tune in at spacedoutradio.com. Greetings and salutations, space travelers, from the Chronicles of the Unknown team. What is Chronicles of the Unknown? I keep hearing about this thing. It's a new paranormal reality TV show based right here in beautiful British Columbia, Canada. Follow our team as we uncover claims of activity on the Caribou Gold Rush Trail. You can also follow us here every third Monday where two members of our team will be available to answer your questions. Have you ever wondered about those weird and strange creatures people have reported throughout history? Do you wonder if those stories are real? Me too, and that's why I started Cryptopia.us. Hey, this is Rob Morphy, crypto historian. Join me once a month on Spaced Out Radio with Dave Scott where we will get into the odd and bizarre reports from the Dover Demon to Harry Hominids and everything in between. I will break down what people like you and me are seeing at spacedoutradio.com. 
Visit purpleplates.com today. For over 40 years, the Purple Energy Plates have been delivering amazing results for their many customers. Inspired by the great genius Nikola Tesla, the harmony, healing, and energetic effects of the plates have proven over and over to be beneficial and often miraculous to thousands of customers. With their money-back guarantee and the many benefits, how can you afford not to get one? Check their site for daily specials and choose from their many energy products. You won't be sorry. Visit them today at purpleplates.com for mind, body, and spirit. And expect a miracle. Strange creatures lurking in the night, the sounds of wood knocking in the forest, odd happenings right out of a fictional world. These are the reports I love. Hi there, this is author Ronald Murphy. And I would love it if you join me and Spaced Out Radio host Dave Scott the second Wednesday of every month on our journey into the unknown land of cryptozoology at spacedoutradio.com. From Mothman to Frogman and everything in between. Hey, they don't call me the crypto guru for nothing. Are you interested in advertising on Spaced Out Radio? Head to our website at spacedoutradio.com and click on our advertising tab. There. You will find an assortment of ways you can get your product out there with us, from radio commercials to banners and social media. Have a product you like our hosts to endorse? We can do that, too. Visit spacedoutradio.com for more details. From British Columbia to Northern California, Pacific North Weird has Cascadia covered. Check out our feature videos at spacedoutradio.com, where I... Vincent Zunza and my super sleuth partner Alexandra Sullivan track down the weird and strange stories from around the Pacific Northwest, from Bigfoot to Mel's Hole and everything in between. This is what makes life exciting. So why report the normal when we can report the Pacific North Weird? Right here at spacedoutradio.com. Oh, there's only one way to rock. Loud and proud. In high definition, Radio 702 Rocks, Las Vegas. Have you ever had an extraterrestrial experience? One you just couldn't explain? Well, maybe I can help. Hello, I am Samantha Mullet. On the second Tuesday of each month, I will join Dave Scott on Space Out Radio to bring a human aspect to ET contact. It's something I've lived with my entire life, and I'd love to help you understand. Let's share our experiences. The ET Experience, the second Tuesday of each month, only on Space Out Radio. Hi there, this is Jolene with Reveal at Reiki and Readings, and I want you to relax. Let me help you chill out and get in touch with your body, mind, and soul. In this busy world, sometimes we need to let go, and this is where I can help. Visit my website, rivuletrnr.wix.com forward slash rivulet r and r every saturday and sunday night as dave scott wanders aimlessly in the wilderness you can come hang out with me james tyson and spaced out weekend we're starting at 9 p.m pacific midnight eastern i'll take you along as we talk with some of the best experts in their fields spacedoutradio.com is the place to find us so sit down relax put your feet up enjoy the topics like the paranormal supernatural intuitiveness and so much more. Hope to see you there. Hi there, this is your psychic medium, Joanna, and I would love it if you would join us every other Sunday on Spaced Out Weekend. With host James Tyson, we'll bring you personal psychic messages on two mediums and a large. Questions about love, life, career changes. We would love it if you would come and join us live. Call in and listen in for the experience. Allow us to open the doors to your other side. Two mediums and a large. Heard only on Space Out Weekend at spacedoutradio.com. Would you like to become one of our space travelers? All you have to do is click on the space travelers icon at spacedoutradio.com. For only $5 a month, you can get access to some great prizes, as well as private monthly shows, newsletters, and a members only section on our website. Become a space traveler today. Do you have a topic or a guest that you'd like to hear on Spaced Out Radio? 
Let us know at spacedoutradio.com where you can sign up to become a Space Traveler member today. Or you can find us on Twitter, at Spaced Out Radio, and on our Facebook page, Spaced Out Radio Show. Welcome back to the SOR Roundtable tonight on Space Out Radio. Good to have you with us if you're taking part in the Revolution Radio chat room. If you are on the Space Out Radio chat room on Spreaker or following along in the SOR Space Travelers Club, good to have you with us. Thank you so much for being here tonight. Tomorrow night and Sunday, Elizabeth Anglin and Uncle Jimbo James Tyson invade the cabin so they can broadcast Spaced Out Weekend. My bag is packed. I'm heading off into the wilderness to find my zen, my chi, and a good Wi-Fi signal in a cave. Maybe Sasquatch has laid down a bed for me so I could relax for the weekend before being back on Monday night. Remember, you can follow us on Twitter at Spaced Out Radio. Give our Facebook page a like, Spaced Out Radio Show. On Instagram, I can be followed at Dave Scott SOR. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, Spaced Out Radio Show, and our website is spacedoutradio.com. Hey, if you haven't signed up already, it's time. Sign up for the SOR Space Travelers Club. It's only 5 bucks a month. With that, you get your name put into monthly prize draws. We're going to be making another prize draw later tonight. Joe Allgaier was our winner last month. He's still awaiting his prize. It's on its way, Joe, I promise you. And... We're giving away another one tonight. You can read the SOR Space Wire, our music, guitar, God himself, Ron Bumblefoot Thal, formerly of Guns N' Roses, the official music of Spaced Out Radio, and so much more. Everything at spacedoutradio.com. We got the panel in tonight. It is the SOR Roundtable. We do it the final Friday of every month. And if you hear a little rattling, that's because Eric Markham is sneaking away from his actual work duties to be with us. Thank you, Eric. Now... There's a challenge that has been set in the SOR Space Travelers. Joe Allgaier, who has an incredible mane of hair, says this. He's going to challenge his mane versus the hair of Giorgio Tsukalos and Eric Cooper's beard to a cage match. Who wins that cage match, Eric Cooper? Oh, it's, it's going to be my beard. And uh, you, you know what? If he could bring Giorgio Tsukalos... Oh my God! I'd love to talk to the guy anyway. So after after we're done with the cage match, uh, you bring him. Yeah, and and we'll do this at the Paracon. So bring it. Excellent, excellent. I'm game for it. I want to referee that thing. I totally do. <laughs> Karina Winter, are you going to put your hair in this match? Or is she still fighting a mouse? No, no. Oh my hair! Oh my God! My hair is <laughs> wild. It's so wild. It does have a life of its own. So I can't oh. say. All right. Beautiful. Beautiful. All right. Let's get back to it. Eric Cooper, you got the first question from the panel tonight. All right. My, my question is a two-parter. So you have a client that has missing time and obviously repressed memories. So on an ethical and um, looking out for the betterment of your client, do you encourage them to go get regressive hypnosis? Or do you even tell them they have repressed memories so that they don't start worrying about it? Now, the second part to that is what if your client knows they have repressed memories and they want to go see a hypnotherapist? Do you warn them about the consequences and do you encourage them to do it? Or do you just let them go do it because it's completely up to them? Hmm. Corrine, do you want to take that one first? Um, I think that I would... You know, uh, you know, Eric, that depends if I truly trust the people that are doing the um, regressive therapy. Um, mm-hmm. if, if I knew that the person was excellent at doing it and I, you know, they had a bunch of, um, you know, good reviews, so to speak, um, I think I would suggest that they get that. But it's a tricky thing. It's tricky. I don't know. It is. <laughs> yeah. Elizabeth, how about you? Um, at, same as Corrine, I would have to, I would refer them to somebody I know who is good, e- even if they're not close. I'd say talk to this person. They may know somebody who they know is good nearer to you. If they don't, I highly, I would highly suggest that you go. But uh, And the reason is I've been through it, and I know how much energy is released when you remember 
things that have been blocked like like a lot of my life changed for the better from the first regression there were side effects which was all of a sudden my worldview changed and so the people mm-hmm. that I hung out with before became very boring and even though they were intelligent people I couldn't hardly be in a room with them for more than 15 minutes without going oh my god I'm so bored but other than that uh, I had wonderful, you know, wonderful other side effects that were good. So I would, I would tell them to go get regressed. Okay, Robert Rose, regression or not? Well, you know that depends on certain factors. I guess if they were adamant about going, I would go by Eric Cooper and S.J. Wells's rule of thumb. I would advise them to go to someone who's established and experienced in helping people with these things. Uh, not having dealt with that a lot myself, I guess I would kind of uh, give them the advice that I not necessarily would want to hear, but that I feel would best direct them. Uh, because there are dangers with, you know, opening up other memories and things like that as well. And you could, you know, there's a 50-50 chance between helping and harming the case. So I would encourage them to do whatever they feel they need to do to get the answer. Eric Markham, final word on it. Uh, I'm kind of out of my bailiwick, but I'd know if it was me, <laughs> I'd want to know. I just can't not know something. <laughs> if I had missing time, I'd, I'd, I'd have to know why I had missing time. And I'm just sort of one of those... I'm going to get what I want, and then after I get it, it blows up in my face. Oh, well, I still, <laughs> yeah, I would, I would want to know. So, you know, based on, on my own, but as far as the people, I would have to defer to the judgment of the psychics and people like, you know, Corinne or Elizabeth and Eric Cooper. They have more of a background on this, but I wouldn't take no for an answer. I'd, ha- I'd have to well, find out. <laughs> here, here's, here's where I stand on it. If you go to the wrong regressive, uh, regre- regressive therapist, you can walk in not being an abductee, for example, and come out an abductee if they don't ask you the right, if they le- ask you the le- leading questions, if they don't do it right. Mm-hmm. So if... Uh, I'm one that stands that you need, uh, I prefer conscious memory versus uh, regressive. Um, I think the best one out there, and I'm, I'm sure I'm going to get arguments, but uh, David Jacobs has been doing this for 40, 50 years. Or, well, 30, 40 years, a very long time. And if they had the, the resources and the, the funds to get to him, I would suggest him. Only because uh, I don't know, uh, only because... Uh, He's the most leading one out there, Eric Cooper. It doesn't matter how long he's been doing it. I'm sorry, I'll shut up now. He's <laughs> terrible. <laughs> have you read? He's terrible. Have you read his huh? transcript? He's terrible. He's oh, terrible. Really old, most leading one. His transcripts from his actual cases are the most leading. He does. He does everything to lead people. He implants his own biases. <laughs> All the time. Okay. I mean, I'll have to look, I, yeah. I'll have to look for somebody then. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Firing it up. Firing it up. That's what it's all about on the round table. Exactly. Drop the now, gloves. Drop the gloves, here, here, Liz. Take here, the beard here's off. My, here's my other suggestion, Let's though. Let's go, Eric. <laughs> here, here is my other suggestion, though, because uh, we do, uh, I know in, in Seattle there is a like an abductee uh, uh, peer counseling uh, group therapy type where abductees can sit and discuss. And I think that's actually better therapy than going to a regressive hypnotherapist. Because discussing your case with peers, I believe, will bring out more memory. Yeah, I agree. All right, next topic. I'm going to get Corrine DeWinter to start for this one, okay, because I know she has followed this case very, very closely. Earlier in August, actually in late July... The FBI officially closed the D.B. Cooper case, saying there was no more evidence. They didn't believe he was alive. They have no further investigation going on. Corrine, what do you think about this? Well, I think D.B. Cooper indeed existed. And, um, of course, they're going to, you know, 
get rid of it as fast. Well, they didn't do it quite as fast as possible, but I mean, they don't want to say, you know what I mean? It's like, um, you know, having to tell a kid, you know, that there's no Santa Claus when they get to be eight years old or something. You know, it's like nobody, I, I believe he existed, but I, I think that there's some funky stuff that happened there and they just don't want to add any more attention to it. Eric Markham from the SOIR Space Wire, what do you think? I had I had heard at one time that they thought possibly he was an inside he was either CIA or FBI that he was an insider. And that might maybe that's why they canceled it, found out, oh God, he really was one of ours. <laughs> I, you what? know. That would be you know, we finally solved the D B Cooper mystery. He was one of our bureau chiefs. <laughs> the, right. the, the sick irony would be hilarious. But yeah, uh, Elizabeth well, Elizabeth Anglin, do you believe that DB Cooper survived, or do you think he died in the woods after he jumped out of that seven twenty seven? You know, I have tried to look at this, and I think because so many people look at it or, or consider it or ponder it, that there are all these little tr- idea trails everywhere about it. I don't think that he. I don't think that he lived. I think that that he either died on the plane, getting off the plane, or somewhere on the way down. But I, I kind of dig the CIA, DIA. There was something <laughs> really wonky going on with like. That's not that much money for somebody to go to all that trouble to get, you know, with that, you know. And, and you would have to really know how to jump out of a jet. But I think there is something else going on there, too. So, I don't know. I don't think he lived. All I know, oh, all I know <laughs> is... Oh, go ahead, Kareem. Sorry, Dave. I didn't mean to interrupt you. Um, there was money found, though, when he jumped out yeah. of the plane. Right. So, where yeah. did that money come from? If he didn't oh, exist. He, he existed, but he's not alive. And oh, I no. He I jumped didn't... and there was... Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And he had money strapped to him, but I think he died. I mean, sometimes I look at it and it looks like he dies. It looks like somebody shoots him. It looks like, like one of the pilots had or somebody had a gun and shot him on the plane and they just didn't want anybody to know, you know. <laughs> so it's like, but I don't think he lived. Well, I'm going to go to Roberto Rosé on this one. You got the final say on D.B. Cooper. Do you think he made it? Do you think he's not or he didn't? Do you think the FBI should have closed the case? Well, I'm wondering it's not a matter of whether or not they should have, but why they did or didn't. I think that the FBI knows, and that's why the case is closed, uh, just for the same reason that they won't uh, test Billy the Kid's grave in New Mexico. Or they say that they won't. Uh, I think maybe that the fantasy of it uh, is more fast, uh, more fascinating than the truth there. So uh, I think maybe a, you know. Also, it's a waste of resources. You know, if he is gone and gotten away with the money, who's it going to hurt now? So well, I have to say about that. I think he made it. I think that he survived. And I know I may be in the minority here, but I think the FBI knows who did it. And maybe the gentleman who did do it, whoever D.B. Cooper was, has passed away. So they just figured, you know what, screw it. Let's just close it up and seal the documents and go from there. There's no point even investigating it. And, you know, maybe 50, 100 years from now, that'll come out. We won't know about it, you know, unless there's some sort of eternity. But we'll go from there. Here's something that pissed me off earlier this month. I know politics can get very, very ugly in the United States. We've seen a lot of that. And in my opinion, the conspiracy theories uh, or people who called uh, election rigging being called conspiracy theorists, we've seen it on both the Democratic and Republican side this year to prove that the conspiracy theorists were indeed right. But sometimes stupidity outrules absolutely everything and no offense to some to my fellow friends who are american especially all of you are american most of our listeners are american but the stupidity of rudy giuliani coming through earlier this month saying 
No terrorist incidents happened on American soil eight years previous to Barack Obama being elected president. Now, if I do my mathematics, just like the rest of the country down there can do their mathematics, <laughs> September 11th, 2001 was seven years previous to Barack Obama getting elected. Therefore, there was a terrorist attack on United States soil by Muslim extremists. Supposedly. Sup supposedly. Supposedly, yeah. Allegedly. But either way, do you think that Giuliani is saying that it didn't happen? Because think about this. Think about this for a second. If you put on your tinfoil hat, much like I have mine on right now, and <laughs> it, it, it looks really, really good on me, okay, there's two points that could be made here. Number one, he could be saying, you know, that 9-11 didn't happen. And that could be the start of maybe taking video away, taking all sorts of, you know, starting to cut out on the internet, like a Mandela effect kind of thing. Or, mm -hmm. or he's just that stupid and politics has become that insane in the United States that he is just making up this BS to blame Barack Obama, love him or hate him, that, that doesn't matter, love him or hate him, to blame the Democrats for everything that the Republicans had done in going to war. Okay, because I think everybody can accept Afghanistan. Whether or not, you know, the U.S. had anything to do with 9-11 is irrelevant. If, if it was Muslim extremism, everybody can accept Afghanistan. But Iraq, Syria, everything like that. Does he not believe that all of that was processed through going into Iraq for no reason? So, Eric Cooper, you served... I'm going to go to you first here, and thank you for your service, my friend. Oh, any time. It was fun. I, mean, I hate saying fun, but that's the easiest word. I miss it. Um, now, I think, and, and I, I'm not sure where to go on this. I, I really uh, really aren't. Um, he could be saying it was an inside job, and that's why it wouldn't be a terrorist attack, although I see it as a terrorist attack any way you look at it, whether it was an inside job or Muslim extremists. It was a terrorist attack. Uh, whether it was by our own government or by Muslim extremists. Now, should we have been in Iraq? No. What I find funny is the fact that we were bombing. There were there were explosions in Afghanistan within two hours of those towers going down. So they knew or they had in their, their minds where to go as soon as that attack happened. Because we had SF, Delta, everyone else heading for Afghanistan before they even looked at Iraq. On the same day the towers went down. I was in Germany. We went on immediate lockdown. We had U.S. tanks rolling through German towns, blocking off streets, because we had no idea in Germany what the hell was going on. Matter of fact, I was on a detail putting tents up for um, a, a medical competition and we got rallied up and told look there was just an attack on the white house and on the twin towers that's where our news came from <laughs> they didn't even know about the pentagon they thought it was the white house that was under attack so then it switched you know later on when we all got trucked back to our companies and we were on 24-hour lockdown and then they locked the gates down we had to ride school buses with our kids uh, with M16s, so because they were scared our kids would be attacked in German streets, and and whatnot. So was Giuliani um, just stupid? I don't, I I don't think so. I, I think it was his version of saying it might be an in, inside job. Corinne De Winter, from a Boston perspective. Wow. Yeah, wow, uh, Eric, you're giving him a whole lot of credit that he doesn't deserve. He's not saying anything of the sort. The guy is bullshitting just like the person he's running for is bullshitting. It's all lies, and people believe lies after they hear them four times, right? Isn't that the 
going thing around like the internet, like, oh, you read something four times, got to be the truth, man. Um, <laughs> he says no, no terrorists happened before Obama. My ass, okay, my ass. He's a jackass, and that's where I'm putting it. Stupid. He's stupid. He he's lying, and he is <laughs> stupid. <laughs> that's where I stand. <laughs> Roberto Rose, need your opinion on this. Well, I don't know, honestly, if it was an inside job or not. I wasn't there. You know, I was in high school, but I can say uh, if it was the extremists who did it, then uh, or whether or not it was an inside job, either way, uh, Rudy Giuliani has shit in his hat and pulled it down over his ears. And uh, I, think he could, I think he could be using it. To, uh, sway the vote of the ignorant. Uh, the, so the, the, let me cut you off here. The amazing part about this is there are actually people defending Giuliani's comments. They're defending him, <laughs> I, saying I that surprised. <laughs> you know, like how ridiculous does this have to get? Mathematics, which is which never lies, obviously explains that if you believe the story of 9-11, that Muslim extremists flew planes into the Twin Towers, knocking them down. We're still trying to figure out what the hell happened to Building 7, because it's the only building to fall from a structural fire <laughs> ever in the history of mankind. It was imploded. Well, you know that, and I yeah. know that. Okay, but either way... We're still looking at mathematics, okay? 2001 plus 2008, or minus 2008, is 7. 2008 minus 2001 is 7. Therefore, there was, in fact, two terrorist attacks, if you include the 1993 bombing, but he didn't go back that far. So it's absolutely painful that politics is coming down to this, where they are, where he can stand there in front of thousands of people and hundreds of thousands, if not millions, of very smart American people, and with a stone face say that nothing terroristic happened before Barack Obama took power. Can I break in real quick? Yeah. Let me bring up the government terrorist attack on Oklahoma City bombing, because that wasn't Timothy McVeigh. That was the government blowing up their own damn building. Okay, I I agree with you on that, okay, but we're going to save that one for another day. Eric Markham, (laughs) you are the staunch Republican of this crowd. You know, you still, you know, are preaching this. As a Republican, how do you feel about Rudy Giuliani's comments? Uh... Okay, I'll <laughs> no defer, <laughs> no deferring here. I kind no, of no. agree with Corinne on this. I'm not so much a Republican as I am a staunchly conservative independent. But that aside, I I almost wonder if he just doesn't get caught caught up in the moment and through that. <laughs> now that I'm I'm as puzzled as you. I mean. The electorate, though, has become so low information, so prone to we got to get you. You have to feed the electorate in ten-second sound bites, um, and then there's always the conspiracy theorist saying he said that to make that side of the, you know, that side of the ticket look stupid on purpose. But I just. That's one of those, every time I read it, I just shake my head and say, you can't be that stupid. But then I look at some of the people driving around Winston-Salem, I said, hmm, <laughs> maybe, maybe you can be. <laughs> I, You're a I Walmart. Just, oh, my God. i tell you what, if the uh, New World Order, really, the Illuminati really want to thin out the population, just if they're listening, put a disintegrator ray on my car. I will have Winston Salem decimated in a week. <laughs> that's all. That's all it's going to take. Now, I, I this has become such a puppet theater as far as our politics goes anymore. I'm sure he knows that what he said was wrong. 
and there's somebody behind the scenes that hey Rudy here's a few mil go out and make an ass of yourself you know for a few mil I'd make an ass of myself I don't you know I just don't I I can't see a logical reason for him to state that so it has to be something to do with the puppet theater well either way it was an absolute dickhead move okay yep. It, it really was. If any, if there's any statement, in my opinion, and I'm an outsider being Canadian, okay, but if there's any statement out there that I found extremely insulting to all of you, my American friends, okay, and I have a lot of American friends and family, I love your country, I love everything about the people that you are, okay, but... If I was an, if I had any ounce of American pride in me, which I don't, no offense, because I'm Canadian, okay, I would be fully, fully pissed off. Something like that would change my vote because that is a straight all out lie. Elizabeth Anglin, you get the final word. Oh, I'm, I'm Karen. Uh, I mean, ninety three. Uh, hello, that was a long, long time ago, and I think. I mean, if there's anything inside about it, I think that the, I mean, they claimed it. The the Muslim far right claimed it. The it it was claimed by Bin Laden. Yes, we did this, and and we are very happy that we did it. I think it might have played into some of W's, I you know, plans because he did want to go to Iraq. And so, you know, happy day for him. He's not going to stop him. But the fact of the matter is they claimed it. And Obama wasn't even all that political back then. So what the, what the fuck? Fudge. Fudge. <laughs> all right. Next topic. Let's, let's cheer this up a bit. Okay, here's here, here's my funny topic of the night, and then Robert Rose, after this question, we'll get to one of yours. Okay, earlier this month, a Russian woman... <laughs> I can't even say this with a straight face. A Russian, a Russian woman went to police claiming she was sexually assaulted in her bedroom. By a character from the Pokemon Go game. She was on her phone playing <laughs> Pokemon Go, and apparently it wanted a piece of her pie. Kareen DeWinter, I'm going to need you to use a little duct tape on the mouth with this one, but I'm giving you the first call. Okay. Well, have you, you ever, know? hold on, have you ever made sweet love to a Pokemon Go character? God, no. And I never will. But anyway, more important than this stupid story, more important than that is the fact that Pokemon Go just invented the best spying device ever for our government. Mm -hmm. Who hears me? Who hears me? Uh, I hear you. Hear you. Uh, Does anybody? I did, that, uh, I did that article on the Space Wire about a month ago. As a matter of fact, I did both articles on both the. Russian rape accusation and the uh, Pokemon Go spy thing. So, you know, so when you, you know, I mean, um, Dave, when you said, oh, Americans, you know, these smart Americans, wrong again, Batman, because <laughs> guess what? Guess what? Most people don't give, most Americans don't give a crap. They're half, they're quite happy to surrender themselves to the idiocy that is being shoved down their throat. We're a dumbed-down nation, and we keep getting dumber. Yep. How much of it's re how much of it is ju just de you know not so much being stupid, but just being tired, worn out by it. It's like okay, I've no matter who's in the White House, I have to have my ass here twelve hours a day, seven days a week on my you know my week on. So it's just a matter of ears down, you know, head down, ears back, getting through the day. Whether no, I know you. You know what, Eric? You're right. You have to follow orders, man. You have to follow orders. You got to punch that clock, and you got to suck up to whoever you got to suck up to. Doesn't it suck? 
Doesn't it? Hmm. Uh, I've always said life is like a crap sandwich. More crap, the you know, more bread you have, less crap you have to eat. And I'm in the right. me- the middle. I can still taste it, but I'm not. I'm not having to eat as much as I did 20 years ago. Right. <laughs> no, I'm saying I'm not saying like you know. Like Jim Morrison said once, you know, you you guys are all a bunch of effing slaves, right? Yeah, I love Morrison. I, I love that statement. But, I mean, it, it turns out that actually we're all a slave to something or somebody or some organization or, or job or whatever. We all are, man, you know. But let's keep our intelligence intact here. You know what I mean? It's Illuminati. Robert Rose, you got the comment on this one. Oh, my God. Hold on, hold on. We got to know first. Have you ever been sexually assaulted by a Pokemon Go character? Not that I can remember. (laughs) Well, it might have been that good then, my friend. (laughs) Well, I still squeak when I walk, but uh, I'll tell you what, though. I, I, I have to wonder, what was this lady on? Uh, where can I get a hold of it? And has she had Stockholm Syndrome and decided to play it again? Well, her friend <laughs> says she was a totally... Obs- she has a friend that said she was so totally obsessed with the game that, she, you know, she, she played it 20 out of 24 hours. She she went to sleep playing it the day of the alleged rape. Lord. And I'm not so much sure that the story is that she alleged that she got raped by a Pokemon character, but that the police actually came to investigate it. What if it's an MK Ultra? (laughs) Hmm? What if Uh, it's actually an MK Ultra tool? Like a KGB version of it? Mm -hmm. (laughs) Mm-hmm. You know, that's freaky. Wow. I I I want to hear from Beardoman on this one. (laughs) <laughs> oh, look Look how controlled kids are when they play it. How many kids have hit the news that were so wrapped up playing Pokemon Go, they got hit by cars? Mm. And, um, I mean, things like that. MK yeah. Ultra. What if it's not just another experiment with the CIA? And I know I'm going out there a little bit with it, but... Um, you, you got so much craziness coming out of M- of of Pokemon that makes you wonder if there's something a little deeper with it. Yeah, totally. Mm. All right. Seth Kind, or no, 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 sorry. Robert Rose. I was thinking of someone else. No offense. Uh, your <laughs> question, if you don't mind. All right. Well, it's related to the Pokemon Go coming up. Uh, <laughs> One of the things I thought of, let's see if you guys agree or disagree at all. Yeah, MK Ultra is a very po- uh, plausible idea. Uh, I kind of liken it to the uh, geocaching in a way. I but geocache. I geocache. I'm going to say that right now. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and let me let me ask you this: Do any of you think that the Pokemon Go app is a population control slash culling tool? Kind of like here where I live, they're releasing the cougars to uh, take care of the deer because they're getting hit on a daily basis. Do you think maybe this is a culling tool uh, to purposely lure people out in the middle of traffic and into dangerous places so that they will die, control the population? Um, That's not very effective culling, in my opinion. Uh, What, they're going to cull three people a year, you know? Well, it, (laughs) it, 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 it does rid the world of stupidity, let's be honest. It does. Hmm. One person every few months? That's not ridding. No, you know. that, that's, that's, that's not effective enough for a culling tool. No way. What if it's a I, practice I think, run? <laughs> well, the way, then that could be. That could be uh, the, the first step, uh, the, the first generation of what's to come. I'm going to I'm gonna tell you right now, I've found over 1,100 geocaches. I'm addicted to it. I don't even know what that is. It's a digital GPS scavenger hunt game that uh, you download the coordinates and then you have to find the hidden prize at the end. No, they're oh, usually in mount- they're, they're usually in mountain areas. Yeah. 
Yeah. So I found 1100 which is still a lot less than other people I know. But it's fun. Damn, you found 1100 of them? I have. I have. And cool. I'll, I'll tell cool. you a little... I, I'm sorry for... And I don't mean to be rude, Robert, about cutting off your question here, but I'll just get in something about geocaching. Okay? If you haven't done it, it's one of the most amazing hobbies that you can find, especially if you have kids, because your children won't even know they're exercising when you take them out to try and find <laughs> these, right? Because they always have a destination to go to and something to find at the end. Uh, yeah, but, a treasure. But everybody knows where the little alien is in Nevada. Now, about five years ago, that little town, uh, why can't I remember the name right now? Um, Rachel. Rachel, Nevada, was about to yeah. go back was about to go bankrupt and claim bankruptcy. And and two gentlemen who were geocachers went to this the, the city officials in one of their council meetings and said, we have an idea that will work. And they said, let us put... Because in order to hide a geocache, you have to go a minimum of every 360 feet. Okay? They said, let's put a row of geocaches every 360 feet along... Uh, Rachel, Nevada, the people will come. And the town didn't believe them. Well, they went from a- averaging about 10 to 15 tourists a day in Rachel, Nevada, to over 500 to 1,000 a day at peak season after they laid over 1,500 geocaches in along what the extraterrestrial highway. And that, yep. ta- that town, because of geocaching, is no longer bankrupt. I can see that. Interesting little yeah. story there. So, yeah. So, I like it. It's a fun hobby, except there's always some jerk out there who just wants to hide one that's impossible. I hate those now, people. Now, uh, on geocaching, uh, wasn't it a couple of years ago that there was a major missing persons case involving geocaching? Oh, oh could have been. Could have been. Yeah, I was thinking that'd be a great way for a... Uh Serial killer to bait, <laughs> you know, bait a trap. Oh, most yeah. definitely. Um, but I don't know if they ever found the the individual. Uh, and I think it hit uh, Paulide's book or his his cases actually. Uh, but yeah, there was a geocacher that was uh, went up missing uh, mysteriously, just disappeared, like most cases in the national forest. Well, that wouldn't and, su- uh, that wouldn't surprise me because you know there. When you hide them, I mean, some people, you know, there's always people out there who have to put them to extreme. Mm-hmm. So that's kind of what happened. Let's move on to a topic here. Let's get a little bit controversial here. We'll start with you, Elizabeth Anglin. What do you think will be the next big conspiracy theory? Oh, brain brain kidnapping. I think that it will be that we have some virtual reality technology that starts to use. It's sort of like Pokemon Go becomes the hive and people's brains start to be used by a bigger computer system. And that and 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 they start developing neural networking based on the brains of the people who are playing something like Pokemon Go, and then they go, wait a minute, my brain's been kidnapped. And that's the next one. Basically an artificial intelligence invasion. Exactly. Of of individual brains, using them for some Mm -hmm. other purpose that people did not say okay to. Like Mm -hmm. a human cloud computing? Exactly. Robert Rose, what do you think will be the next big conspiracy theory out there? Honestly, there's so many of them, I couldn't think of what the next one would be, except uh, maybe man and machine finally uh, merging together. How many How many people, you know, there's new iPhone 7 coming out already. How many people are going to wait in line to be the first person to be completely implanted with a smart device? Yeah. Kareen De Winter? Kareen De Winter? Uh, I think, um, I don't know what the next big one's going to be, but whoever becomes president is going to be a target of a lot of stuff. And, <laughs> you know, like, honestly, who do you guys think is going to win? Just, you know. 
Oh, I, I think Hillary is chosen. For, yeah, I think so. I think uh, he's really? also, unfortunately. Yeah. I don't think we've elected a president in probably 20 years. You're right no. about that. Yeah. I think Hillary was chosen 20 years ago. Well, she looked better 20 years ago. She at least looked female and not robotic. <laughs> hey, did you guys did you guys see speaking of Hillary, did you see where she was on stage and it she all of a sudden like froze and one of her security guards came up to her yeah. and kind of tapped her and they believe yeah. they gave her like an EpiPen or something like that where she, because she may have been having a seizure? Mm-hmm. Do you think there's no. a cover up about that? Yeah, possibility. Or she's rep- or she's reptilian was not adjusting to her new body. <laughs> <laughs> Had to warm her up. It was too cold on stage. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I think she's had some serious. I think she's had some serious issues, uh, health issues, and mm-hmm. I doubt if she. And this isn't a threat or to be construed as anything, but uh, I don't think she'll live if she once she's elected. I doubt if she lives to see the end of her presidency. Well, I think Shark, she got clone. Why yeah, do you think? Shark, why? Why do you think that? Why do you think she's going not going to live? I don't think she. I think she's got some. She was treated. I mean, like I said, the media has such a short attention span. But she was having some very serious issues just prior to her resignation. As, Secretary of State, or just after, right. two, so. like two years ago, wasn't it? Yeah, I think it was two or three years ago. It was about two was, years ago. It was August she, two years ago. Yep. Yeah, she was having some altered mental status issues, syncope, uh, bouts. Yeah, it's kind of funny. I, I think there's it's something kind of really. Funny. I do. I think she's got some serious health issues, but she's by God going to be president before she goes. Like it's on her bucket mm-hmm. list. It, it's mm. it's kind of funny how serious her issues were, and then all of a sudden she's just right back into, well, what seems to be right back into shape again, but obviously not. All right. Mm. Robert Rose, we've got yours. Elizabeth, we've got yours. I Here's my conspiracy theory. I'm going to throw that out there. I think the next big conspiracy theory is going to be Im- chip implanting for money for everything basically the mark of the beast i think mm-hmm. that's the next big one that's going to come down the pipe here soon and with the way especially in north america and western europe that people are turning to atheism i mean if there's any biblical sign out there it's it's the chip out there i mean we could talk about anti-vaccines or whatever you want to talk about but if they end up putting that chip in there to me that is the full-on confirmation that biblically the is accurate that the bible is accurate absolutely right eric markham but, or anybody want to respond on that i, I do think you're I, right. um, it's, yeah, we've been aiming wanna... for it for years how many people don't carry cash because they've got a chip in their car you know we have right. chipped car it started out an atm card now you can use your atm card to make purchases directly at the store now your atm card mine has a chip in it so what's next mark them you you can you can even use you you can even use your cell phone to make purchases by scanning the uh the rfid or whatever it is and it goes straight to your bank account you don't even need your card anymore well, we don't even have money anymore. I mean, right. I haven't seen a paycheck where I physically had to go cash a check in probably 10 years. Mm-hmm. I think the last time I ever had a physical check was when I was a travel tech. And let's not forget about Facebook, you guys. Facebook oh, the thin money now? Thing that is going on. You know, in fact, you can't even look up, you know, say I was going to look up menopause. So say I look up menopause on Google, guess what? I'm going to be getting a bunch of menopause emails about menopause. And yeah. up. I mean, you guys, we're tracked from, you know, every angle at this point. So do we need those chips? Probably not, unless you're, like, living underground or off the grid, which so mm-hmm. many people are and can do that. But, I mean, we're tracked. Uh, you well, know, the government... 
the, the government's even attacking the ones that are, you know, it's illegal to collect water, uh, rainwater in Oregon, for example. I, I know. mean, no. they, 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 yeah. they even, they, they even, they're try, trying to force people not to be on the grid. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Oh, it's like now, as far as conspiracy, catch rainwater in Colorado, too. As far as conspiracy yeah. theory, has anyone heard or seen any news about Nibiru coming back around in 2017? No. Yeah, no. but it seems like it was coming back around in 2014 to, you know, new pictures. No, you know, no. I hear the it original. Uh huh. But the original theory about Nibiru or Planet X, as some call it, it was supposed to come around closest to Earth every 2,600 years. So I find it funny that yeah, you're right. I, I remember hearing it in 2014. Now I read somewhere that. It, it was wrong. It's supposed to be here in 2017. Now, every 2,600 years, and, and, and Ashley and I were talking about this last night, is that there's supposed to be a technological jump in civilization every time Nibiru came closest to the planet. But there's not 2,600 years between the Romans and, say, the Egyptians or the you know Sumerians. Or, there's not 2,600 years in between there. So how, how do they get those numbers? Well, that's one of those things you can throw any kind of BS you want out there because <laughs> how are you going to verify it? <laughs> you, know, it's like, you know, I could I could say Nibiru's coming and get ready to have uh, your education downloaded by disc. Or, you know, <laughs> everyone put everyone put Nikes on and get ready to uh, catch the tail and let's all commit suicide and, and jump huh. into the spaceship. <laughs> oh, yeah. what, the, what the hell? Let's just do it. Let's just do it. I'm I'm not gonna lie. Well, you guys were getting into your yap on Mrs. Spaced Out Radio came down here and I squeezed her butt. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> oh, goodness. <laughs> she just she, she just worked out and she's looking all sweaty hot right now and I couldn't resist <laughs> myself so I had to do it. I had to do it. <laughs> she's got a red face now and she's running out of here. But that's okay. <laughs> I can't take uh, you anywhere. <laughs> yeah, pretty, she pretty much. Make you, <laughs> pretty she much. Go make waffles for you now. No uh, pancakes. She makes one hell of a pancake. Pancakes. Pancakes. Yeah. pancakes. There you go. All right. Who else has a question here? We got about six minutes before we got to go to break. Well, I have something interesting. Okay, this doesn't have to do with current news, but it's an interesting question nonetheless. There was a saint named Christina who lived from 1150 to 1224. Now, she died, or so it appeared, after an epileptic seizure, but during her funeral, she leapt from her coffin, clung to a beam of the church, and refused to come down. She finally did, saying she had died and had a vision of hell, purgatory, and heaven, and that she could no longer abide the smell of human sin. She became a nun and was noted for her kindness, but throughout her life, she claimed that human smelled of sin. Now, if you guys have ever read um, A Natural History of the Senses by Diane Ackerman, fantastic book. She talks about how we can smell different things and people when we meet them. Do you guys believe that we can actually smell bad in somebody? I personally don't think you can smell bad, but I sure know that if I believe that everybody has the power to be empathic and that feeling that you get, whether you just don't like someone because their energy is bad or something along those lines. I always like to give the example that on days when I used to go to church and I didn't never went to church often or frequent, but once every couple months I, I would feel the need to go the hypocrisy. When I walked into a church would absolutely beat the living hell out of me. No pun intended. Okay, but it would, you know, I would look at someone, I would say, yeah, you were at the bar last night getting all drunk, picking fights and trying to cheat on your wife. You know, you cheat on your husband. You probably hit your kids. You know how you could just feel that energy? I think, mm -hmm. Kareen, it's more the empathic feeling that everyone has rather than actually smelling evil or smelling sin or anything like that. Well, I'm going to tell you. Uh, sorry, go ahead, Eric. Or we could go ahead. With, it, it's a joke. Um, we could make some um, auric deodorant and patent it and sell it. 
<laughs> well, here's here's what I experienced personally. Um, I used to hang out, and I still do hang out at this one bar. And there was this guy that would always play pool with me, and he's like, you know, we can hang around sometime, blah, 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 blah. But I could smell him, you guys. And I, what I smelled, in my opinion, was death, okay? And I've smelled corpses before that have been rotting. I know what it smells like. <laughs> But I, not, not that the guy had B.O. or anything like that, but I could smell death on him. So anyways, you know, some time passed. I never hung out with him. I had a bad feeling. So anyways, come to find out a, a while later that the guy actually was in Vietnam and he had killed many people. And there was something else funky about him, like his lifestyle or something. So, what you know, I don't consider myself an empath or intuitive or anything like that. Um, but I swear, I smell. But like you said, Dave, your senses would tell you or they have told you that some people are just not what they pretend to be. Um, and I'm sure Elizabeth could attest to this as well. She's a psychic medium. Um, but I'm just wondering, have you guys ever had any kind of sense like that about someone that you This trusted? happened today. No, this happened today. Um, the, a guy came in to the shop, and he, my dog went and smelled him, and he immediately decided he was okay. And I looked at the guy, and I said, oh, he's okay. He's a, he's a good guy. And the guy comes up, and he starts asking me about an Akashic Record reading. And, you know, all of a sudden, I start flipping through his records without even thinking. And I realized that in one of his past lives, he had been um, he had an executioner. He had killed a lot of people as an executioner. And he had been atoning for it. And in this particular lifetime, he was atoning for it. So he was like the most gentle guy you could possibly meet. And, and the dog decided to just sort of lay down and fall asleep at his feet. And I'm like, yeah, he, you know, he's okay. But there was something like the dog and I both kind of came to the same, he's okay. And then I looked at his records and it was like, oh, yeah, he's he's been atoning for his guilt over killing all these people so long ago. He's perfectly gentle and harmless and kind. So I think that we do smell, I think, that our animals smell, you know, this kind of stuff on people and that... It's it's interesting. I think it's really really interesting. But it is. yeah, it happened today. Wow. Well, maybe you, maybe you could consider a spiritual sense. You know, how you got, you got your five senses. Maybe you have yeah. five senses on the spiritual side, which smelling would be one of them. Obviously. Oh, that's and an interesting got, theory. And then uh, you've got the yeah. third eye. You got the third eye for your vision. Um. I, I mean, we, yeah, we could I probably go into a long discussion cool about that. But. Yeah, All right, guys. I'm going to call a stop here. We're going to go to a break on Spaced Out Radio tonight. Third hour of the SOR mm -hmm. Roundtable coming up right after this. Greetings and salutations, space travelers, from the Chronicles of the Unknown team. What is Chronicles of the Unknown? I keep hearing about this thing. It's a new paranormal reality TV show based right here in beautiful British Columbia, Canada. Follow our team as we uncover claims of activity on the Caribou Gold Rush Trail. You can also follow us here every third Monday where two members of our team will be available to answer your questions. We'll give you some equipment updates and some of our experiences on the road. Right here on Spaced Out Radio. Hi there. I'm Butch Witkowski, lead investigator with Euphoricop. On the final Monday of every month, you can listen to me and host Dave Scott on Spaced Out Radio's Strange Days. We're going to get to the heart of the matter when it comes to what's happening out there. People are seeing and experiencing things from ET contact to Bigfoot, and I want to hear about it. Your experiences are what we investigators need to help solve these unknown mysteries. So tune in at spacedoutradio.com to the final Monday of every month from Butch Witkowski's Strange Days. 
Visit purpleplates.com today. For over 40 years, the Purple Energy Plates have been delivering amazing results for their many customers. Inspired by the great genius Nikola Tesla, the harmony, healing, and energetic effects of the plates have proven over and over to be beneficial and often miraculous to thousands of customers. With their money-back guarantee and the many benefits, how can you afford not to get one? Check their site for daily specials and choose from their many energy products. You won't be sorry. Visit them today at purpleplates.com for mind, body, and spirit. And expect a miracle. This is your medium, Joanna, from Spaced Out Weekend, two mediums and a large. I would love it if you would come and join us with host James Tyson every other Sunday on Spaced Out Weekend. Together, we will take your calls and your questions live. Our goal is to provide you with a positive outlook on deep questions that you may have. Questions regarding love, relationships, money, or whatever else is on your mind. Come and check us out at spacedoutradio.com. Have you checked out the SOR Spacewire at spacedoutradio.com yet? Every day we post the latest stories regarding the weird, strange, and completely unbelievable. From cryptid and UFO sightings to the conspiracy world, we tackle it all. Hi there, I'm Eric Markham, Space Out Radio's news director for the SOR Spacewire. And if you have a story, I want to hear it. Email me at news at spaceoutradio.com. Patrolling the Pacific Northwest, we are always on the lookout for the strange and unassuming stories that real people are experiencing. Hi, I'm Vincent Zunza from Pacific North Weird. Me and Alexandra Sullivan have teamed to bring to you those odd stories that never seem to make it into the mainstream. Stories so weird that we'll leave you scratching your head wondering, is this real? It's as real as it gets with Pacific North Weird. You can watch our videos right here at spacedoutradio.com. Become more intimate and interactive with Spaced Out Radio. Join our Space Travelers Club with your new membership. For $5 a month, we'll provide you with special access to the website, monthly prize draws from books to psychic readings, along with monthly newsletter, private interviews, and more. Sign up today to be part of Spaced Out Radio's experience. Every month on Spaced Out Radio, we look into the deep and dark reports of cryptids roaming around the world with me, Rob Morphy, from Cryptopia.us. I would love it if you would join me and host Dave Scott as we delve into the most arcane stories and reports regarding creatures of the unknown. My job is to hunt down the details and bring the evidence forward to you. These aren't your regular Bigfoot stories I'm talking about either. You can find out more about crypto history at spacedoutradio.com. Looking for a place to advertise at a very reasonable cost? Look no further than Spaced Out Radio. Spacedoutradio.com has an advertising tab that you can click to check out our daily, weekly, and monthly packages to play on the radio or our website, including social media. From commercial spots to banners, we have it all. Check out our competitive pricing today. You hear footsteps in the empty room above you. A rocking chair begins rocking by itself. Don't be afraid of the things that go bump in the night. Reach for Spirit Story Box. The iPhone app the Huffington Post UK called the only ghost hunting app you will ever need. Spirit Story Box. The spirits are telling their stories. Are you listening? Strange creatures lurking in the night, the sounds of wood knocking in the forest, odd happenings right out of a fictional world. These are the reports I love. Hi there, this is author Ronald Murphy, and I would love it if you join me and Spaced Out Radio host Dave Scott the second Wednesday of every month on our journey into the unknown land of cryptozoology at spacedoutradio.com. From Mothman to Frogman and everything in between, hey, they don't call me the crypto guru for nothing. Find yourself constantly looking up in the sky, looking for answers? Have you had extraterrestrial contact? Are you an abductee? Looking for answers to your experiences? Hi there, I'm R. Keith Andrews, Spaced Out Radio's resident ET expert. Join me live the first Friday of every month where I take questions from the Spaced Out Radio chat room and help you understand those from the far off world. It's two hours of knowledge every experiencer should listen to. Hope to see you there. Did you know that Spaced Out Radio runs seven days a week? Hi, it's James Tyson from Spaced Out Weekend. Every Saturday and Sunday night, starting at 9 p.m. Pacific, 
midnight Eastern, you can join me and my guests for some great chatter about what's going on out in the universe or even in that dark part of the basement you really don't want to go back into. Well, let's find the answers to your experiences together. So come on up to Uncle Jimbo's cabin on the weekend. For more information, look us up at spacedoutradio.com. Would you like to connect with us on Spaced Out Radio? Head to spacedoutradio.com to check out the latest shows, guests, and sponsors. And don't forget to sign up for the Space Travelers Club. You'll find all you need at spacedoutradio.com. Welcome back to Spaced Out Radio tonight. I am your host, Dave Scott. Good to have you with us on this Friday night, early Saturday morning, if you're on the East Coast. Tomorrow night and Sunday, Spaced Out Weekend is back in Uncle Jimbo's cabin with Elizabeth and James. They will be taking over the nightclub here, get the strobe lights going, the lasers flickering, and the house music cranked. It'll be a good one. Make sure you're with us as I wander off into the wilderness to find my zen and my chi and a good Wi-Fi signal so I can tune in personally. Make sure you are here with us as well. Remember, you can follow us on Twitter at Spaced Out Radio. Give our Facebook page a like, Spaced Out Radio Show. On Instagram, I can be followed at Dave Scott SOR. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, Spaced Out Radio Show, and our website is spacedoutradio.com. While there... You can join the SOR Space Travelers Club. You get monthly prize draws. The prize draw will be held right after I am done this message. And then we will all clap for the winner. I promise you. We will clap. Check out the SOR Space Wire by Eric Markham, our news director, our blog section, as we have some very talented writers, most of us sitting right on this panel right now. And if you like our music, check out Ron Bumblefoot Thal by clicking on the Bumblefoot banner. Bumblefoot is the official music of Spaced Out Radio. Remember, if you're listening on Revolution Radio, it is a donation station financed by you, the valued listener. Do us a favor, help us out, donate today. Bill Cardwell has set the SOR Space Traveler's password for tonight. Confabulation is the password. Confabulation. And because I actually pronounced it right, Bill, I need a Katy Perry for that one. You know what I'm talking about. Yes, I need a Katy Perry. For sure. That's what I need. So, we'll get to that. Now, we got to announce the winner of this month, the month of August, the SOR Space Traveler of the Month, who's going to win a prize here is none other than Gloria. Gloria in this in the SOR Space Travelers. Gloria is the winner for the month. Welcome, Gloria Vega Roberts. You are a winner here on Spaced Out Radio. SOR Space Travelers, we will get in touch with you, send you your prize package, courtesy of Spaced Out Radio. Thank you so much. All you have to do to be a winner on Spaced Out Radio is sign up for the Space Travelers Club. It's five bucks a month. It's well worth it. Thank you, Gloria. You now join Joe Allgaier as the first two winners. And thank you, Bill Cardwell, for a beautiful Katy Perry mention in the SOR Space Travelers. Very, very cool. Very cool. Anyways, we're going to continue on with the panel here as we have one hour to go. Robert Rose is going to enlighten us with a question that he has for the panel. I do have heard of James Randy, the amazing Randy. Uh, now, he's challenged the world of the paranormal and things like that. And for me, I think in order to uh, be a good paranormal investigator, you also have to think like a skeptic. And with that being said, uh, do you know anybody? Or do you have evidence that you feel could refute uh, James Randi's challenges? Um. Can I say something? Uh, first, uh, uh, James Randi is an idiot. Um, he's, an idiot. <laughs> he's an idiot because 
he hid from the world that he was gay for so long. Not that we give a crap if he's gay or not. I don't care. Mm. But he, like, so he himself was covering up his heart from us, okay? Mm-hmm. So to come out and, and challenge people, I, you know, I really, I would like to know exactly what his ramifications for proof of anything of the paranormal, the uh, afterlife, anything he's looking for. Really? So uh, you mean to tell me no one has given him any proof after all this time? I don't think so. I don't think so. What's a, I'm not familiar with the guy. What's his challenge? <laughs> yeah, okay. that's, that's the issue. I, I'll speak to it if anybody wants to listen. Go ahead. The issue is is how the challenges are set up. So, uh, you know, basically... They control the challenge. So one of the, when somebody who came up, I don't know if it was his or somebody else's, but she was a medical intuitive, fairly well known. I don't know her name. I was, wasn't was somebody I knew. But she, um, what they did is they gave her a person who had had a kidney removed, had a, a problem with a kidney. The kidney was removed. And they gave this person to the medical intuitive, and she read them and said, well, you know, basically you're in good health. And, you know, there's not a lot here that I would be too concerned about and, and, and said, you know, everything looks to be like it's in working order. And they said, no, nope, you're not a medical intuitive because you didn't notice that the kidney was missing. Well, the fact is, as a medical intuitive, you notice when something is gone wrong and is in pain or there's disease in an organ. But if the person is returned to health because an organ has been removed... You're not necessarily, you're, you know, for low entropy energy sake, you're not going to pick up on the fact that an organ is removed, especially if it means that the person is healthy because it is removed, because there's nothing <laughs> wrong with the organ. It's not there. They're not, so, they're not a damn x-ray okay, so, machine. <laughs> exactly. So there wasn't any problem with the person's kidney for her to pick up on because there wasn't a kidney there and the person had returned to health. But that was set up for her to fail. And any of these things that you try to go do, they'll set it up with some kind of trick involved, which doesn't, it, it doesn't speak to the way the process works. And they don't give a crap. It, it, they just figure out how we can make it look like it doesn't work. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Who had the poltergeist in their house dropping things behind there? Oh, the dog. That was okay. quiet. Sorry. Okay. Yeah, All right. <laughs> you can ask for cat food. Sorry. <laughs> you know what? What bugs me about challenges like the amazing Randy put out, okay, is no matter what, the person who challenges him is destined to fail. It doesn't matter how accurate they are because they're always going to find that little loophole that proves, so called, that it doesn't exist or that the Mm -hmm. person doesn't have the ability or the power, like Elizabeth just stated. That is an issue for me, because it's one thing to go into this type of challenge skeptically, but it's another thing to set it up for absolute failure. You know, that's like when you say the sky is blue and someone says, well, no, it's not actually blue, it's actually you know, a light blue mixed with Mm -hmm. a a royal blue. You know what I'm saying? Right. Where they start getting into yeah, exactly. the the absolute silliness of the of the specifics. So if you're gonna be pulling that, everyone who takes that challenge is going to get egg on their face, and all that does is put more egg on the face of people who are in this field. That's what I think. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So mm-hmm. anybody else want to comment on this before we move on? I think you pretty well nailed it. Nobody. Yeah, you, you, yeah, you nailed you couldn't, it. You could not. I don't care how good the person is; they're not gonna. They're not gonna win. They're, you're right. There's gonna be some loophole, some piece of BS that is gonna be the skeptic's last word. That no, exactly. you right because your toes were crossed and your left turn toenails purple or something you know you know they what? set the rules and it's it's like vegas it's set. you know the house is gonna win <laughs> absolutely and you know what it's like most talk shows out there okay 
I try not to be this way, but if I wanted to be a jerk, I could always have the last word. Because all I have to do is turn off your microphones. And I automatically get the last word. You know, how fair is that to the audience? How fair is that to the people who are listening in or tuning in to, to a challenge like this? It's not fair. It's set up, like Eric just said, you know, with Las Vegas type odds. You'll never win. Right. My next question is, going back to the ghost box session that we had last night, I asked Bill Hauser this, and I'll ask you guys this. We see people, and we seem to be all right with people using the ghost box or dowsing or pendulums to communicate, yet we completely freak out when a Ouija board (laughs) is used. I'm not seeing the difference in any of these types of communication. For instance, I use a pendulum. Would I use a Ouija board? Absolutely I would. Okay? I hold nothing against it. Much like Bill uses the ghost box. Corrine, I'll start with you on this one. Okay, well, I have a wide history growing up with a Ouija board. My mother was really into the paranormal, and she would have Ouija board sessions often at our kitchen table. So... And I've probably said this before. So one time the Ouija board told me when I was going to die, and um, it was like a couple of years from now, actually. It, didn't see, it seemed like a long way off when I was 13 years old, but now it's creeping up on me. But anyways, the point is the Ouija board is harmful simply because of that, that your pendulum can't say you're going to die when you're, you know, whatever, however old. It can't, like, spell out things like a Ouija board can. But I think in saying that, I will say also that when you are using any tool, like a pendulum, like the Ouija board, like tarot cards, anything like that, you do have to, uh, you know, preface it with a prayer and say, you know, I want, you know, please only good spirits come through. You have to be smart about it. You got to protect yourself and your environment. So that's Mm -hmm. what I have to say about that. Totally. Eric, Eric Cooper, your thoughts? Yeah, well, you and he kind of puzzled me last night because, I mean, he was adamant about not using a Ouija board. There is no difference between a Ouija board and a spirit box. None whatsoever. Um, they are tools. Pendulums, uh, yeah, like you just said. Pendulums, tarot cards, they are all divinatory tools. They are all spirit communication tools. They are tools. Now, it's how you use them. And as if you're not safe with them, as long as you use, the, you know, as long as you're smart, you protect yourself in the environment, like you said, um, the, you're fine. What screwed up the Ouija board is all these movies that came out for one, because they were using the Ouija board back in the 1920s with a spiritualist movement with the Fox Sisters. That's, I mean, the, 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 the Ouija board goes back to the 1800s, but the Fox Sisters with the spiritualist movement in the 1920s is really what brought seances and and Ouija boards to the forefront. Were they bashed on back then? No, they weren't. They were used as tools. Then you bring up the movie Ouija board and witch board and spirit board. I mean, there's a whole bunch of movies out there that all bash on Ouija boards. So, yeah, people look at that and they see these movies that are all awful and and all the demon came through and yada, yada, yada. But it's okay for the ghost box because it's not a Ouija board. It does the same exact thing. Um, The spirits can be just as uh, deceiving in the ghost box, for example. And and we've heard uh, the the one, the the, we've heard the spirits on the ghost box last night saying the c word, for example. I mean, there there's a whole you you can (laughs) there's no difference. Robert Rose, your opinion on the ghost box? Pendulums, dowsing versus the Ouija board. Well, I think they're all useful tools. I think it's a matter of what you're comfortable with. Uh, But my only thing is someone who might say, well, I won't use the Ouija board or whatever. Uh, Perhaps maybe they're comfortable with the fact that uh, you can shut the uh, ghost box off or you can turn off your app or you can shut your recorder off and that Ouija board's still there. And... uh, if you leave it out, it's open to the manipulation. 
And so it's kind of, I think, a, a issue mentally that you can shut it off a device and be done with it when you're done with it. Um, but as far as using them and what you're going to contact, yes, obviously you do say your prayer of protection. However, it gets dangerous when you are contacting something from the other side and then you start to make a transaction. Uh, for example, I heard of a possession in which a demon had went after someone after this demon was inside someone and asked for a drink of water in possession of this body and the person had given the demon a drink of water and therefore it was uh, considered a slight deal with the demon uh, versus asking questions. You need to remember that you have protection over you once you've said your prayer and that you have power over these things and they know it when you know it. That that is very good points there, my friend. Thank you so much for for mentioning that. Kareen De Winter, your thoughts? Ouija versus, or did I already use you? You already used me. Oh, I'm sorry, uh, <laughs> Elizabeth Anglin. Your thoughts? Ouija board versus the other three? Um, I, I never really used the Ouija board. Had one when I was growing up. Uh, I know a friend of mine who got a negative. A spirit who who threw his the cup he was using on the Ouija board again, across the room. She was a really angry, angry woman, and he was like, "Don't ever use it." And I said, "Okay, I won't." Um, so I think it's really important that people don't try to use things for personal gain or for manipulating situations or to be in too much control. And Edward Casey found this out. He wasn't using any tools, but when he tried to use his gifts to make money by going into the oil business, he spent a lot of time and energy screwing himself up because he was trying to use his gifts to make a lot of money or to, and, and he formed this oil business. And when he realized that his gifts were to be of service to others and to be compassionate to others, he he became successful with his gifts. So no matter what the tool is, whether it's your body, a Ouija board, a ghost box, uh, no matter what it is, just be aware that when you're talking with spirit, if you stay on the straight and narrow path of being of service, of compassion, of uh, providing love and light and understanding, you're you're going to get positive results. And when you're looking for money, you're going to find all sorts of obstacles thrown in your way. Eric Markham, you've seen me work the pendulum with you. Uh, we can barely hear you. You sound like you're literally I down. Had, I, I'm sorry, I had my microphone tipped up. Uh, were, were you leaning back? You were leaning no, back, weren't you? No, I had my, yeah. I had my microphone up, pointed up. Yeah, he was I've brushing seen, his beard. Yeah, I've, yeah, I've seen enough of the uh, pendulum stuff that, yeah, there's no skepticism there anymore. <laughs> but I find it interesting that the planchette ri uh, writing, also known as Fuji, got its start in China around 1100 A.D. I'm bringing this off the top of my head. And that the deck that we use is a tarot deck was the 78-card deck that was created in China. And our playing card, the 52, is the the old-fashioned divining cards from China with the major triumphs taken out. I've always, yeah, it's, these things have roots back into a civilization that, for the most part, had already gone out, explored the world, when realized there's no place like home and closed off their society while well, most of our European ancestors were you know wearing loincloths made of animal hides and smelling bad mm -hmm. I, I think what happens with a Ouija board is because there is such a negative connotation in it I mean you even look at a Ouija board and they've got pentagrams drawn on it the you look at the the lettering and it's purposely gothic looking you know i think the the tendency for a ouija board to bring on negative outcomes is because 
when you look at it, when you go into it, you're already pre-programmed to expect something to be wrong. My generation grew up with The Exorcist. And the whole promise there was that Captain Howdy spoke to the girl through her Ouija board. Right. You know, so you've got people in their 50s like me and my mom who, when she ran, <laughs> dad came home from where he worked nights, he came home and every light in the house was on. My mom being a, a strict, uh, was a very devout Catholic, had just scared the hell out of herself with, by reading the, uh, the Exorcist at night when dad wasn't home. <laughs> so, <laughs> no, I think, I, you know, let's face it, the Ouija board is the analog version of the spirit the box. ghost box yep. yeah you know it, like the the mp3 player is the digital version of the reel-to-reel deck or you go back mm-hmm. to the edison phonograph i mean it's just that's the old tech and if something evil wants to get through or if you open a doorway to something evil i don't care what you're using evil is what you're going to get right Spears can come through if you have two mirrors facing each other, for example. You don't need a Ouija board. Yeah. I've tried that after you said that because I used to sit there in front of the mirror. <laughs> My mom had an oval mirror that came out, you know, those old fashioned hair dryers that you had to wear the, mm-hmm. the bonnet. She had the oval mirror out of one. And I just, when I discovered, I don't know how I figured it out, but one day I just aimed that mirror at the, the medicine cabinet mirror and it was like, Holy crap, how does the reflection of a reflection reflect the reflection? <laughs> right. And, and, and okay. just be, no, no, don't get me wrong. Just because you put two mirrors facing each other isn't automatically going to create it. Uh, the conditions have to be right. You've got to have spirits there that want to come through. All it does is open the possibility of a portal. I heard it made a vortex, Eric. It can, yeah. Hmm. Hmm. Excellent. We're moving on. We're moving on. I'm rounding this thing up. Go to the next question. The next question for me is, and I'll start with you, Robert Rose, on this one. Mm -hmm. What would make you quit the paranormal? What would make me quit the paranormal? Yes. Uh, I would have to honestly be uh, scared out of it somehow where... uh uh, my family or my, you know, my well-being and livelihood were threatened. Uh, as far as the evidence of anything in particular, um, it, it would take something that would harm the people that I'm here for uh, in order for me to quit the paranormal. Uh, as far as evidences, I live for learning and growing in the field of the paranormal. But it would ultimately, you know, if I talked about a touchy subject and. You know, the next day someone showed up at my door and they said, hey, I really don't like this. You know, if you value your well-being and your family, you're going to have to shut your mouth. And then, you know, the next day I'm coming on Facebook and I'm saying, it's been fun, but I think I'm just going to do Minecraft videos or some shit from now on. (laughs) Which is equally bad. (laughs) Elizabeth Anglin, what would make you quit the paranormal? It's too late. I can't quit. I mean, I've I've had my phone tapped. I've had friends die um, in mysterious circumstances. I've, um, you know, I've I've been through the ringer. It it it. This is the life that I signed up for. So this is the life that I'm doing, and that's just how it is. Until it's done. Eric Markham, what would get you out of the paranormal? Nothing. <laughs> I, I don't have enough sense to, the more danger involved, the more I want to get to the bottom of it. You're looking at somebody who's gone rock climbing without any idea what rock climbing is, got halfway up and realized, holy crap, what am I doing up here? And spent the next half hour on a ledge thinking, I'm going to die. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I, I just, you know, I get into things and I'll, I'm going to do it. I'll, I'm going to see it through. Yeah, you know, I was. I don't think. I mean, I've had ghosts talk to me. I've I've lived in a haunted house. Uh, I don't think there's anything that could, because the more proof or the more activity 
I see or I witness, the more I want to get to the bottom of it. Mm. So yeah, I'm <laughs> I'm totally hooked. How about you, Coop Dog? Oh, that's a hard one because uh, you know if it actually happened. Because uh, I'm with I'm with uh, Robert on this as far as if they threatened my family, you could threaten me all day. Uh, I've seen four combat tours. Uh, not much scares me anymore. Um, and even if they threatened my family, I probably wouldn't believe them. Now, a bullet came through my window. There would be bullets going out my window. Mm-hmm. So, to be honest with you, I, I, I'm I'm really not sure. Kareen. I think that um, because we all here in our confabulation, by the way, um, are know what we know and we've gone through certain things and we're awake to this now, you cannot leave the paranormal. You might think you're leaving the paranormal, but the paranormal will never leave your life because no. we know so much. Agreed. Agreed. I can on- once you open it, you can't really close it. I can honestly nope. say there is two ways I would leave, and I could keep my head help- held high, walking away. If someone came up to me and said, "Dave, I'll buy you out of spaced out radio for a significant amount of money," that is really going to be beneficial to my family. And part of that contract is because a lot of times what happens in radio, especially in mainstream, is when you get bought out of a contract or bought or some, or your show bought or something along those lines, you have a grace period where you can no longer broadcast. If somebody said to me, you can't broadcast and I'll pay you this amount of money on Spaced Out Radio, I'm, I'm gone. That takes care of my yeah, family. But Dave, that doesn't mean that you're leaving the paranormal. Oh, no, I, no. no but I'm, I, I'm, that's why I'm saying uh, there's two reasons. Number two, if all of a sudden somebody from CSIS, which is the Canadian Spy Security Agency, walked up to my door, knocked on it, and said, "We want you to stop now," I'm done. I am. <laughs> I okay. It would be like, hey, do you want to? Do you mind uh, turning off and just not doing this anymore? Yeah, sure, not a problem. Thanks a lot. Would you like to come in for a coffee, crumpets, maybe? Okay. So you, yeah, but so you're never going to be into being would, an ship again. I would walk away. I, <laughs> I w- with my head held high because I've well, accomplished. Yeah. I've accomplished what I've needed to accomplish. Not fully, but. You know that conversation from last night. You can't. You can't tell me you would not go in your backyard and go look for Bigfoot. <laughs> me neither. I don't believe him. He's going uh-huh. for Bigfoot. He, you might. He, okay. No. Let, let, seriously. Let me clarify, if, if, if my it, family, it, it, I agree with Seth. If if my family, okay. You know, my job is to make sure that my family is protected. If somebody, and, and you know what, I'm not a gun dude, man. Okay. If somebody, I'm not, you know, I'm a 43 year old guy who who is out of shape. I'm still really good looking, though. My mom told me, but <laughs> but 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 you know, if somebody came up and said, "Look, man, it's this, it's these topics. You either stop playing with them full time, or we have to." take things into our own hands i'm out man i'm a chicken shit that way pardon my language but i am chicken that way man and i would yeah, walk bigfoot will become bear it will be yeah honey you want to come out in the woods and look for bear with me oh whatever <laughs> whatever i have no problem walking away Mm-hmm. No tomorrow morning with the severed head of a garden gnome under his sheet. Yeah, yeah. Th- <laughs> see, there you go with that damn garden gnome crap again. There you go. There you go. All of you people. All of you people. I hope you find no sand problem. in your. Uh, I hope you find sand in your underpants later. <laughs> All right. We need to make a movie, The Gnome Father. Oh, my God. I I, I hate you people right now. All right. Let's get to another one. On Facebook, I put up a picture today in the Space Out Radio group on Facebook. Okay. Which was, and I'm just pulling it up here, my other computers decided to start acting really slow. That's always what happens. And 
Anyhow, this Skype is being just a pain in the butt right now, so I apologize to you. That one hundred percent Skype, not thin to do with Dave dot com or anything or Spaced Out Radio. Okay. There was an article that I put on Spaced Out Radio's group page on Facebook today. And by the way, Trip, in the Spaced Out Radio chat room on Spreaker, I do see that comment. We'll all surround Dave's house with our gnomes on leashes. That is just a jerk <laughs> move. Just an absolute <laughs> jerk move. Anyways, <laughs> article basically says, if aliens asked you abort to board their craft, what would you do? I'll start with you on this one, Eric Markham. Would you I'm jo- gone. <laughs> I hope, I hope I would. I, I, I hope a push comes to shove, I would. I was just, I was talking about this with my wife the other day because she's like, well, well, where would you go? Mm-hmm. And I don't know. I mean, there's so many things in our own solar system I'd want to check out. I wouldn't have to go far. And I'd really be afraid to check out some of my favorite deep sky objects because I'm seeing what they looked like millions of years ago. I don't want to go to the Orion Nebula and find out it's a small solar system now or <laughs> or it's dissipated and it's not there. I think I'd want to do, you know, local stuff. See the base. See if there's a base on the back of the moon. I think I have enough questions that it would pro- and enough curiosity or just I got to know that I would I would go on board. I think once I got on board I'd be making sure that the big book at the on the nightstand wasn't to serve man the cookbook but you know, <laughs> by the time I'd figure that out it'd be too late. <laughs> That's when you start fighting. Pointy yeah. sticks, Joe, pointy sticks. Yes, Joe. Joe always sleeps with his pointy stick. He does. We're gonna have to. We're gonna have to get Joe an official pointy stick with the S O R logo engraved on it. That would with, be with a with, with with a matching tinfoil hat. Oh yeah, yeah. I don't know if it would. You know, we don't want to wreck his hair though, because Joe Allgaier has we'll some make, pretty we'll amazing. Make, we'll hair. make it tall. We'll okay. make it tall. Okay, that works. <laughs> Robert Rose, if a UFO landed in front of you and they said, hey, you want to come for a ride? Are you going for a ride? Well, that depends. I mean, am I sitting in the back, and you know, with the kids and splitting the gas, or am I gone for good? Uh, if I knew I was coming back and there's a guarantee that I'm coming back, hell yeah, I would take a trip around. Uh, but if I was told, you know, we don't know if we're going to let you come back, And I would absolutely uh, say no, because if a UFO landed and these things were there to ask me, then right there I've had all the contact I need for the rest of my life, and I'm good with that. Kareen DeWinder, you staying or going? Um, I pretty much think we have no choice. If they want to take us, they're going to take us. It's not like we can bargain with them, really. uh, That's not the point of the question, though. That's not the okay. point of the question. If they open you're, the door and, and, and say, Kareen to winter, we want you to put on your most elegant black dress and your best bo- and your best shoes possible, preferably closed-toed, not open-toed, are you going? I would rather not go than go. I'm just old-fashioned like that. <laughs> Take a so, picture, though. Yeah, well, we've had that conversation before. <laughs> all, right, all right, my ET abductee friend, how about you, my dear Elizabeth? Well, it gets it gets back to our programming from childhood that you never talk to strangers and you definitely don't get in the van with them. <laughs> um, but I have gone when I've been asked by ETs that I know and 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 I have gone. I've gone willingly. I've gone unwillingly. So I guess the answer is yes, but I think for the normal person, I think that we, our reptilian hindbrain, <clears throat> will switch back to what were we taught in elementary school? Oh, never talk to strangers and definitely don't get in the car with them. So most people would probably say no, but I'll, I've said yes before. Coop, 
You jumping on? Uh, uh, I'm going to say it depends on the species. And that, yeah. and that's a flat-out answer. Uh, if it's reptilians, no, I'm fighting. If it's Pleiadians, I might, if I'm guaranteed to come back. I, I'm with Robert Rose on that one. Uh, if Can I bring the family? Sure. You know? No, that's what I'm saying. I, I, I ask them, can I, can I take the family? Let's say, the family they, let's say they say no. So the, they say no, then you know what? Let me take a picture and have a nice day. I'm going to tell you guys, I'm going to play it this way. Uh, I'm gone. I am, mm-hmm. I've am. i already told Mrs. Spaced Out Radio that if that opportunity comes, I have to go. From what I have seen, I have to go. And I will make a video and a letter quickly on my mm-hmm. iPhone before I drop it to say, <laughs> no, she did not murder me. I'm going into the spacecraft. Right? But seriously, as someone who has had an extraterrestrial invite them over for a conversation, and as someone who five days previous to that experience has had a UFO landing in front of me, mm-hmm. I need I need to go. I need to find out. And if it and I'm old enough, I've already procreated, so the name continues on. I've I've done my job, maybe not as much for my little guy, okay, but I figure if if this is my one and done, this is my path and Hopefully, I can get broadcast signal onto Spreaker and Revolution Radio in order to <laughs> in order to continue the broadcast. If not, uh, Eric, I'm stopping. Uh, that's Eric Markham. I'm stopping by your house to pick you up, and we're on our way, man. And if that's the way my life has to go, and my life has to end that way, I'm okay with it. But I do agree with what Eric Cooper said. It depends on the species. Okay. Yeah, for, totally. Where I saw the UFO land and the extraterrestrials in that forest, I was with Samantha Mowat another time where we went back there and she go and she was testing me and she says, Dave, you know there's something back in the forest. And I said, Yeah, I can feel them. She says, Should we go check them out or should we not? And I looked at her point blank and I said, I don't feel comfortable with whoever is in there right now. In fact, because I could feel like my heart was racing thinking about it. And that's not a good scenario. You know, it was fear that I was feeling. And she goes, she goes, good. Your senses are picking up. She goes, if you said, yes, let's go back there. I would have stopped you because there's some not some very not good ETs back there right now. And we probably wouldn't come back if we went into that forest. So good call now, on, now, Dave, on using your, yeah. Let, let, let me bring this up for your listeners sake. If, if you used to get on that ship and go with the good ones, yeah, we would pick up space up radio, spaced out radio and carry it on. <laughs> okay. That That's way, good... when you come back that way, when you come back, if you came back, Spaced out radio would still be going. Can you pay the yeah, bill? Right. Can you can you pay the bill at least? So <laughs> we, we will figure it out. <laughs> so Dave, here's a more personal question for you. Yeah. If if a spaceship lands in your front yard and I step out and say, Dave, are you coming? Are I'm you gone. gonna come? I'm gone. <laughs> I am I I am abs honestly. I will not turn down that opportunity again. Okay. I, I will not turn down that opportunity again. Uh, something tells me in my life that, and no, the aliens don't look like gnomes, Denise. She's, <laughs> <laughs> Denise is asking in the Spaced Out Radio chat room on Spreaker, she's like, what if the aliens look like gnomes? Oh, I'm so funny. I'm so funny. Look, I'm making fun of Dave because he hates gnomes. Or them damn minions. Thank you, Eric, for bringing that into the conversation. <laughs> you know. Anyways, <laughs> Elizabeth, if you show up in my backyard, I'm gone. I am gone. Okay. Okay. I have a question for all of you. Okay. And as some of you know, behind the scenes, and I'll enlighten the audience. Okay. I suffer from anxiety and depression. And my anxiety has been very high lately. 
And thankfully, I had a very good conversation with Eric Cooper and Kareem DeWinter last night. And they, uh, you know, when you get a chance to, when you have friends like that who will allow you to vent, it's always a good thing when you have depression and anxiety because Mm -hmm. you need to get those out. So publicly, I am saying thank you to both of you for being there for me last night. Until like yeah. until like three thirty in the morning Pacific time, which was like six thirty in the morning for poor Corrine. Yeah. But <laughs> but one of the things that I want to discuss, and be damned if it just didn't escape my mind right now, and Oops. that's that's going to piss me off. But I, I think it's important to know that you need to be able to have a release out there. So if you have anxiety or depression, talk to somebody. Just talk yeah. to somebody, you know. Mm-hmm. And I'm and I'm blabbering right now because I totally forgot what I was going to ask you guys. I'm such an idiot. I'm such but an idiot. Said, but you just said something really important. If you're going through something, reach out to somebody. Help yeah, what I'm doing with Forest Moon and uh, some of the Forest Moon members. Sorry, yeah. guys. I had a little bit of Skype feedback there. And the chat room's going off on the gnomes. It's totally... <laughs> yeah. Too shiny. Yeah, absolutely. I agree with you that it, it needed to come out, and it came out last night in regards to it, you know. And I think it's important to have that, that avenue to be able to speak, because if you don't, then... You're you're kind of screwing with yourself in your own mind. But anyways, okay, I've remembered my point now. A couple of nights ago, I had a real bad situation uh, where I just, after the show, I just had a very angry moment. And I know people in this field who, when they get into a little bit of financial distress or need some positivity or they need a boost, they go to their spirit guides and their spirit guides help blow them up, okay? Whether it's financially, whether it's, you know, uh, with clients or whether it's with listeners or whatever the situation may be. So I went outside and I absolutely vented to my guides vented to any alien contact who could be listening because I do know that I am implanted and I went off and I basically told them I said if you're not going to help out this whole situation that you've helped create with spaced out radio I said I'm out and I and I literally yelled up at the sky go f yourselves I'm <laughs> I I am done with this mm-hmm. so my question to you guys the panel and I'll start with you, Elizabeth, because you're more the intuitive one here. Um, did I break the connection by doing that? No. Um, but, but you know, it's not, you know, it, it's a hard time right now. I, I mean, I'm in a, te- like, my business is not going very well, and I'm going up and down the street here, and nobody else is either, and it's probably because of the election. And, you know, I can ask my guides for help and I can do my affirmations and I can, you know, do what I can do. The main thing that I have learned is to um, proceed forward with faith even in the absence of confirmation (laughs) instead of blaming the guides or the aliens or, or God or whoever else it's that if i have guidance to do a certain thing i proceed forward even in the absence of of the positive feedback and usually what will happen is the bigger rewards will come they may not come when i want them to but they will come and and they will be beyond anything that i could possibly have imagined for myself so i think I'm just going to leave you a little, you know, proceed forward with faith even in the absence of confirmation because I think your guidance has been good, but you're you're still working through the whole absence of confirmation part of it. And and I've gotten the same thing here with this with the art gallery. 
you know, the woman who rented me the building said, you're going to do great. I had two ladies come in from Albuquerque in the same kind of business saying, you're doing great. You're going to do great. And then I make $15 a day. Yeah. And, yeah. you know, <laughs> and it's yeah. like, well, guess what? I'm committed and here I am and here's what I got. And, and I've got two years on this lease and I'm just going to proceed forward and we're going to see how it works out. And, and so far, every time I proceeded forward, even in the absence of confirmation, something wonderful has come of it. I've never, ever been dumped on my butt except by the horse. Okay, yeah. but, but so. I'm going to say something that I said to Corrine last night, and Corrine actually agreed with me for the most part. Mm-hmm. I am getting say I deal with a lot of intuitive people, and I have people who I go to and trust behind the scenes that nobody knows about. But like I said to Kareen, a lot of psychic mediums out there can predict the negative like there is no tomorrow. It's like picking the lottery numbers. Okay? Mm -hmm. If you need something bad told that's going to happen, hell, go to a psychic. They'll tell you. But why is everything, and I mean this as 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 a good point here, And I'm not saying this to put any psychic person down, because I have my own intuitiveness that I question. But why is it that every psychic, if it's something good that's coming, it's always four months, six months, eight months, or a year away? And when you finally get to that timeline that they said, it's still four months, six months, eight months, 12 months away. They can predict the living hell out of the negative. Oh, for instance, are you, I'm, I'm using me as an example here. I'm using me as an example. I have been. T- I was told that my July would be an absolute hell. Guess what came out? And I was told this back in May. Guess what? My July was a living hell in my personal life. Okay? Just a piece of shit month. Pardon my language. But... All the good stuff, well, geez, that's four, six, eight months, ten months all the way. And then when I finally get there, guess what's another four, six, eight, ten, twelve months away? And I'll tell you, it's bullshit. It's crap. And I'm tired of it. You know, I know there are psychics out there who can predict what the timeline is. Okay? I get that. Okay, but for the 98% of you out there who are always 4, 6, 8, 10, 12 months away, stick it in your ear because people are tired of that. (laughs) Who doesn't? Honestly, I'm not looking for a show of hands or who agrees with me. That is absolute truth. That is absolute truth. And it's not about winning the lottery. It's not about, you know, uh, trying to find that true love or that dream job that's going to pay you 75000 a year plus a retirement package. Okay? It's not about that. What it's about is playing with someone's life. Because every psychic I've talked to can sure as hell protect the negative. But anything positive, I'm tired of the timeline. When does the positive happen? Eric Cooper, your opinion. <laughs> <laughs> Next on <Okay>. Crossfire. <laughs> right? Okay. I think, um, as far as spirit guides, I think they, they test you a lot. I think it is... Uh, uh, <sighs> I, I'm, I'm thinking here, because, yeah, I, I think we get tested a lot, especially when we have big missions in this life. Um, yeah. So it's a, it's a hard one, and I agree. And it really sucks when you when you do have anxiety disorders, because I mean I have PTSD, and I look at our finances all the time. And uh, I, I think everything is meant to happen. Everything that's meant to happen happens when it's supposed to. Um, re- you you got to remember, as a pagan, I believe in reincarnation. Mm-hmm. Every every life you live is a training ground for your next life. Um, that's my belief. And so, within that training ground, you learn what you're supposed to learn when you're supposed to. When you're supposed to. And I, I'm, my, my belief, uh, my theory, is deja vu is basically you're reliving what you've done in a past life. 
and and I'm gonna there, there may be arguments on that, but to me, yeah, deja vu. Yeah, that means you didn't learn the lesson. You learned in your last life, and you're you're just reliving it again, and you will over and over again until you get it. So when you when your spirit guides uh, and you didn't break any connection because they know you're going through a hard time, and maybe it's a testing period. And I know, you get tired of testing periods, believe me. But things will get better once you're past your test. All right. All right. Let me guess. Is it three, six, nine, twelve months away? <laughs> no, I don't I don't believe in timelines like that. But I, I know what you're saying. Yeah, you hear it all the time and all you hear about is the negative from psychics. Exactly. From a lot of them. From Robert, a lot of them. Robert Rose, your opinion. Did he fall asleep? Is Robert Rose still there? No, my mute button was messed up. I didn't fall asleep. <laughs> yeah. uh, I'm just, and I'm thinking about this, and I have to say that uh, the negative bombards us to the point that sometimes it's hard to see the positive. But what you have to do is shut yourself down to just you and your circle for a day or two. And... You're here, you're on the radio, you're doing things, but you have to take time to be yourself and shut the world out, and then you can sit and reflect. Uh, yeah, these psychics never tell you anything positive, really. Uh, I do know someone who's different from that, but I wonder the same thing, and I, I think the reason that we're stuck with this is because there are uh, emotional vampires out there and those emotional vampires, Dave, unfortunately, they feed off of your anxiety. Uh, they feed off of your bad day. I mean, there's people, you know, you, you walk around, you look around in society. It's almost to the point that they get off on seeing you suffer. Oh, and, they're pieces of yeah. poo, man. They're pieces of poo. Well, <laughs> that's what you're, about. you're sitting there right now, you know, you're behind that microphone. And you have people who are listening to you whose day or night or week is made better because they had the chance and opportunity to sit down and listen to you. In a world where there's all this entertainment, they decided to listen to you versus, you know, going on Netflix and watching something mindless for another day. You have engaged your listener and allowed them to emotionally invest in you. And that is one of the positive things. Uh, you know, yeah. when you got that wife and them babies at home, uh, that's what keeps you going. And you're sitting there behind that microphone. And I, you know, we've had we've had this talk where, uh, you know, you say, I'm ready to hang it up and stuff like that. But then you go sit in your corner and it's your wife who uh, gives you the water bottle and, uh, you know, patches the cuts on your forehead and says, get back in there and kick its ass. Yeah, that's happened uh -huh. numer numerous, numerous times, my friend. <laughs> numerous <laughs> times. Mm -hmm. You know, I appreciate that. Th those are wise words, Robert Rose. Wise words. Thank you for that. I appreciate that. Brother. Eric Markham. Yes. W what wow. do you think of the psychic timeline, my friend? Well... I don't want to see this end. I'm just getting oh, into it's, it. Oh, it's not ended. I can tell yeah. you that. I may talk yeah. a tough game. I am way too deep into this now that yeah. I, I can't end it. I know. We, I, I just think, I almost wonder if the timeline, it is so easy to do make a misstep. Looking back in my own life, I can see the dog crap along the path. And I think the reason that the timeline goes so far out on the good stuff is because we keep stepping on dog crap and getting diverted off the path. Mm. Dog and crap on the shoe is something lot. that pisses me off, yeah. man. Oh, God. The only thing worse than dog crap is when you move your couch out of your old house to take it to the new, and that juji fruit that you dropped down the seat cushions six months ago... <laughs> is stuck to the bottom of your shoe <laughs> and it won't come off it's worse than gum the lady no, with I, uh, the lady with the the best pairs of shoes here Corrine, be honest uh, have you 
Have you ever had a little bit of dog poo on a? You're dressed up all night. <laughs> you're dressed up all night for a night out in Boston, watching your Red Sox lose to my Yankees, or your Bruins losing to whoever. And then all of a no. sudden, and then all of a sudden, you step in a pile of dog doo doo. No, I'm not going to use the word doo doo. Um, I've never stepped in a pile of shit before. <laughs> you lie. Everybody has been shoe tainted. Everybody. Yes, I have. You lie. You lie. Ladies and gentlemen, I have Mr. Ron Bubblefoot Thal playing in the background at spaceoutradio.com. Robert Rose, Elizabeth Anglin, Eric Markham, Eric Cooper, and the lovely and talented, my favorite poet on earth next to Leonard Cohen, Corrine DeWinter. Okay, I want to say thank you for taking part in a really rough and tumble SOR roundtable. I'm going to try and change it up a little bit for next month. I want to create more of a debate style. And i got to figure out how I'm going to do that. So, I want to say thank you guys for being a part of this. It's always a pleasure to have all of you with us on a nightly basis, the final Friday of every month. And once again, let's get a real round of applause for Gloria. Gloria Roberts winning the SOR Space Travelers Prize. Way to go, Gloria. Way to go. You know. It should have been me. No, I'm kidding. Congratulations, Gloria. Uh-huh. Excellent, guys. Yeah. Great great show. I want all of you to hold on for a couple of minutes here as I'm going to talk us right out of this. Saturday and Sunday night, 9 p.m. Pacific, midnight Eastern time, Space Out Weekend with Elizabeth Anglin, Uncle Jimbo James Tyson, the next two nights. My bag is packed. I'm leaving for the country. Well, I'm already on top of the mountain here, so I'm just going to go find a cave, go to sleep for a couple of days, have some fun. Maybe cuddle up to Bigfoot. See where it goes. So, have a good one. Good night. Bumblefoot's taking us home. Crank it up. Little brother is watching. We'll expose you all. I know you're out there somewhere watching me. Oh, come on. Who doesn't like this? Everybody is given the horns right now. Everybody is given the horns. I got my horns up. No, I'm not horny. Exactly. We got the head banging going on. Come on in, crowd. I still got the show running on this end. There we go. All right, we're calling it. Love you all. Good night. Good night.